revitalized podcast. We uh, this is a really I'm excited about this. One. I'm it's so a really good excited. one. This is gonna be so much fun. This is oh our uh, second <laughs> ever live stream of yeah. the podcast. So hopefully things don't go wrong. Uh, <laughs> still no pressure, but you know. Yeah, uh, if you don't miss out. It's gonna be a problem. <laughs> it's gonna be a problem. Not yeah. gonna lie. But uh, <laughs> yeah, this one it's gonna be a really good episode. We uh, we got a very special guest on today, guys. Um, I'm sure you heard a lot about it in the intro and from the title and stuff. But um, yeah, Bill William, he's been a long-term friend of ours, known him for quite a few years now. Started out as a client, developed and became friends, and, and now it's basically, you know, family at this point. Yeah. And uh, just, you know, like we do with a lot of our podcasts and a lot of the testimonials that we have and things like that, you know, this isn't like a, a client testimony or anything, but just Bill's story, it's uh, it's so nuts that we just, we wanted to bring him on and kind of give him an, a, a platform to share some of the stuff that's been going on in his life you know, since he was a boy and going into a man and now in the recent years and that sort of stuff, because, um, like if you guys get a chance to know Bill and get a chance to meet him and you can see this podcast and hear the stories that he can share and the background that he came from and just the things that he's gone through and then know where he's at now, like, yeah. you know, it, yeah, he's, he's a walking miracle. Talk about you know? giving people hope. Totally. Like that's a big, because so many people are dealing with right now the things that Bill has been able to overcome. Yep. And I'm telling you, you guys, you're going to want to watch this because just so many people um, or so many people that people know, people know either yourselves or someone you know, because everyone knows someone who's dealt with this certain particular thing that Bill's going to go over. Sure. Um. Yeah, like, let's remain a little bit mysterious in the start. Um, and then... <laughs> it's in the title of the episode, honey. They already know. With addiction, with addiction and yep. just all these things, like it's just, it's really, really important that people, you know, they, they see and, and they just hear and know more, um, more stories of, of others overcoming all these challenges. Totally. Because the more you hear it, then the more belief you'll have that you can actually overcome it. Yeah. So that's it. You know, and so, so we're going to go into a lot today. It's going to get very deep. We're going to, we're going to try and just pull some great stories out of bill because he has ridiculous ones i'll tell you right now yeah doesn't matter how deep he goes today there's just there's stuff that he just he can't talk about in in, yeah. uh, in public yeah but um you know <laughs> if you guys like i said get a chance to meet him he's a walking miracle so today uh bill thank you for being here man would you uh so would you mind just introducing yourself to the audience letting everybody know who you are what you're about yeah for sure do you just want me to start by telling a bit of my story like how we met. Yeah, well, or... we're going to get into all that. Just, okay. just let everybody know who you are and, you know, just anything yeah. you want to say. Just who is Bill Ken? Yeah, just, just get everybody, at, you know, acclimated to to what they're about to walk themselves into. What's it like as a kid for Bill Ken? Like, for me, it was pretty, pretty storied, right? Um, my parents didn't get along as far as I can remember, as long as I can remember. Um, they never slept in the same bed. <clears throat> they would fight a lot, like, verbally, sometimes physically, which was difficult to watch. Um, I can like imagine. My mom was, yeah. like, my best friend growing up. Like I said, as long as I can remember, she was, you know, we, we spent so much time together. Um, I was a real mama's boy, for sure, 100%. We shared a lot of the same interests, like hunting and fishing and just being outdoors and loved animals and so much. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry. But yeah, like, so like I said, like I had a pretty normal childhood other than my parents fighting. I uh, was, yeah, you know, I was into sports, lots of physical activity. Growing up on a farm, it's pretty physical, right? Always helped my right. dad on the farm. Like, I was just a super healthy kid, ate relatively good, um, all homegrown stuff. And yeah, so I like the beginning of my childhood was, was pretty, pretty decent. Like, I, honestly, I would say I was pretty happy besides seeing my parents fight once in a while, which wasn't really, uh. didn't really weigh heavy on my mind. But um, fast forward to like when I was 10 years old, I basically I got really sick one day in school and I had to leave school. And um, it just got worse and worse to the point when my parents. Just took me to the hospital, and they told my parents I had uh, T cell leukemia. Um, wow! Well. And at that time, my parents were obviously super scared, and so like they, the doctors just told them this is what we do, and so that's that's what they did, right? They sent me to um, a children's hospital in in Edmonton, and right. um, that's where I began chemotherapy and and just the whole cancer treatment, right? Um, like obviously as a ten year old kid, it was it was pretty tough, right? Like. <clears throat> basically i don't know if i should get too much in that it'll touch a little bit on it but um just yeah like just some... go, go as deep as you want to man yeah. okay we can okay. always cut stuff out yeah exactly yeah. okay well basically like on the on the way to the hospital like i said we used to live in westlock it's about an hour and a half drive away um 
I got like a super, super bad nosebleed and it like didn't stop for hours. And like at the hospital, wow. they're just trying to stop this nosebleed. Like it was wild. Like I never had, I usually oh. never got nosebleeds. And True, um, yeah. it was shortly after getting to the hospital. The one in Edmonton, actually, that's when they told me I had leukemia. The one where I had, like my hometown, they told me I had Hodgkin's disease or something. But, um, so in these ways, yeah, basically they told my parents what, what had to go down. And my parents said, like, you know, that's, they agreed to that. And, um, so basically, like I said, I just started doing treatments and um, chemotherapy was the first one and um, which made me super, super sick. I started losing my hair and, you know, I spent a lot of time in the hospital. Like sometimes I'd spend three months at a time in there. And it's funny, like I don't really remember how long of that I went through, but I know it was like just about a year of, of in and out of the hospital and um, different complications to do with the treatments and like, it's, it's like one of the most toxic things you can put in your body is the, is the chemo drugs, right? Yeah. Totally. And, especially um, as a kid. Yeah, especially as a kid. Crazy, yeah. man. And, you know, for it's funny, like, as a child, I got, like, I made a lot of friends in the hospital and stuff because, like, I was in there so the much thing? and a lot of the kids were, like, a lot of kids like, with cancer <clears throat> in there too as well. And, um, you know, we'd play board games and stuff yeah. and it was kind of like, I almost kind of enjoyed it, right? Like, um, it's weird, but... So I made a lot of friends in there, but like the well, sad thing. I mean, thing... you just, you, you, you know, you, you made the best out of a bad situation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like death was never a thought of mine, you know, and um, oh. like, I don't know why, but um, like a lot of the kids I went to hospital with, a lot of them, they didn't make it, right? Um, actually, none of them sure. I actually met in the hospital made friends with. They never, none of them survived. I think that like the survival rate when I was going through them was like 12%. I didn't know that at the wow. time, but I did some research after and it was, it was pretty bad. And, um, mm. <clears throat> so basically like when I was in the hospital and stuff, my mom never left my side. Like she stayed in a cot. Um, she was there for me, right? Like she was my rock when I was going through that. My dad was, you know, he had a farm, a massive pig farm and we had chickens, horses yeah. and all that. So we were super busy, <clears throat> right? Um, he basically became a single parent to my brother at that time. Um, just taking care of them and, um, so yeah, I'm sure it was really tough for them too, especially my brother. I know my brother missed me and my mom and. So that would be mm -hmm. tough on him, mm -hmm. right? But, um, yeah. Yeah, like, um, basically, uh, they told me I came out of remission, which was they told me my cancer would come back. So then they suggested I have um, a bone marrow transplant. And, um, there was no, like, no family matched up. So basically, they found a donor. <clears throat> they found an unrelated donor in the UK. So I had to wait a few months for that. And, um, so there was like a, yeah. a bone marrow transplant clinic in Calgary, which is about a five hour drive away. So I basically just remember going down there and then undergoing treatments down there, which was basically I had like 10 rounds of full body radiation and then a bunch of chemotherapy. Like, like I said, I was 10 years old. I didn't really understand, um, like the, um, the medical, like the, the scientific terms and stuff like that, right. Of why they were doing this. But I sure. just know yeah. like simplicity was they had to kill every body, every cell. So basically most of the cells in my body, like not just the cancer, but so it was like, it was actually super dangerous because. If I was like, they wouldn't let anyone come and visit me at that point. Like my mom was, was able because like she was with me the whole time, but because my immune system was like so low, if like someone got in a cold or something, they told me it could have killed me. Right. And, um, you got it. just another note too, like I was on, I was in so much pain. Cause if people don't like, if you don't know, like radiation, basically what it does is it burns you from the inside out. So I was like in like, so, so much pain, like. I don't remember anywhere else in my body, but I just remember it. My throat, my chest was really bad. And, um, so I was on like so much morphine. It would basically like, it would kill, it would kill any regular person that wasn't in a lot of pain, but only because I was in so much pain, I could have that much. And I could hit this thing like every seven minutes. And it's funny too, like rewind before when I was in the hospital, I like, I would go to school and stuff in the hospital, like that little class when we go there and go to school. And, um, for every reason, like I really, I'd always get like this. Um, they give me um, intravenous gravel, and I just really loved it. Like I liked it was a really really nice high. <laughs> like it was like yeah. a really sorry to describe, but and it was then, like a. And then how old were you felt, at this point? Like eleven, twelve, maybe. Ten, yeah, ten years old, just almost eleven and, years okay. old, probably, because I was diagnosed at right. ten years old. But this was still pretty <laughs> early, and so yeah, like basically you could say at like ten years old, I was addicted to to morphine, right, and gravel, and hey. um, pretty crazy. When I was in, in the hospital in, in Calgary and I was undergoing the bone marrow transplant, okay, like I said, I was on morphine for close to three months, right? And mm -hmm. um, like I said, I was, I was injecting it. 
Um, I was on an intravenous, so I could hit, I could get an injection every seven minutes. Yeah. Now I'd be hitting that every three or four minutes as often as I could. And they basically, basically got to the point where they had to take it away because I was overdosing. Um, yeah. So they took it away from me. Wow. Like, yeah, it was crazy. Overdosing on morphine mm. at 10 years old. At 10 years old, yeah. So they took it away and they would just come and give it to me whenever, you know, I just really, really, really wanted it. And, yeah. um, so yeah, it was crazy, man. Like, um, and then, um, you know, so I did, you know, I survived that, survived all that. Um, I was in, I remember I was in the Calgary. Basically, they took me from the hospital to like a, it's called the Ronald McDonald House. And basically, yeah. because we lived so far away from the, the, the bone marrow transplant, like specialist hospital, like they didn't have one close to where we were. So we stayed in there and just to like, I can't remember how long, but it was quite a while, right? Until I stabilized and they were, you know, yeah. comfortable with, you know, thinking I'd be able to be able to okay on my own. Um, not sure. be able to come to the hospital every day, right? Basically, so so then once that, well, that was done, we we went back home and um, I don't remember much of that at all, to be honest. And then I just remember we went out because I had another checkup in Calgary. So basically, my brother, me, my brother, and my mom, we went we went to that, right? And like I said, it was a, a, a quite big five-hour journey. And um, on the way back, like my mom was super tired, I guess, and her, um, she fell asleep at the wheel. And basically, mm-hmm. we went through a stop sign, and me and my mom were wearing our seatbelts. <laughs> so, um, like, we were t boned when we went through the stop sign. Me and my mom were thrown from the vehicle. I landed in the ditch, and the vehicle landed on top of her. I'm not too sure, like, whereabouts that was, but fortunately, my brother was there wearing his seatbelt, so he, like, he stayed in the vehicle and didn't really get too many serious injuries. But my mom was killed at the scene, like, fatally injured. Wow. And then, um, I had a fractured femur and like a huge scar on my head and concussed and basically like I don't remember the accident I don't remember like I was probably asleep too I guess um, I just remember coming to in the ditch like being super cold and just screaming with my mom is my mom okay and like it's weird it was like my, that was my first thought right and um, then I heard a helicopter coming and I got loaded up in the helicopter and screaming with my mom with my brother and they told me they're fine they're fine and um I get to the hospital, I'm still like, I've come to in the hospital, I don't know if they <clears throat> put me out or whatever, but then I came to it again, I was like, where's my mom, where's my mom, I was my brother, and they told me, like, my brother, your brother's over here, he's fine, your mom's just in another room, she, she's fine, right, and then, um, so basically it wasn't until, like, I, I was brought into another room, like, I can't remember how long, like, it could have been days, it could have been weeks, I don't know, right, I was out of it, and wow. um, I came to in this room, and it was me and my brother in there, and my dad and like a bunch of family, and then they basically told me, your mom's dead. And I just like, I was just devastated. Right? I cried for weeks. It was just, it was, it was devastating. And um, see, I don't remember too much of that, but like, I remember then getting home and crying and crying and crying, right? Just devastated. And um, there'd be nurses and stuff coming in, and like, I'd been doing therapy and stuff in the house. And it was just, yeah, my grandparents stayed with me, and my grandparents from uh, Caloops. Like my mom's parents, they came and stayed with us and like till the funeral and stuff. And yeah, I just remember just being just absolutely devastated, right? Like, and, um, mm-hmm. you know, I don't remember too much of that. Like, life was kind of like, that's, you know, kind of got normalized, I guess. But like, I never, I never overcame that yeah. mentally, emotionally. Like, I'd never had any counseling or nothing like that. No one really taught me. Like, I, I blame myself. I blame, I blamed everyone. I like, I was just super, super mad at what had happened and I just didn't understand um, why, like, I was like, God, why did, why did this happen? Why did you do this to me? And um, it was tough. And um, so basically, like, I started acting out, like, um, steal my dad's cigarettes, like, he smokes, so I steal his smokes and steal his booze. He's like, he made booze and stuff. So I started stealing that and taking that to school and, and drinking and getting drunk in school and skipping school. Oh, this is in grade seven or eight, so that's pretty crazy in itself right and um again I don't know why I did that like I didn't even I guess I kind of like the buzz of booze but I kind of just think I did it just to be a badass right I guess I don't really understand why <laughs> I did that but, sure. you know what I mean like I thought it was cool <laughs> but um right yeah like that's right. like and then um like I just remember being super depressed right I guess like I was dev like still devastated and um you know I you know I had like times where I you know obviously wasn't like in it dumps crying all the time all the time but you know I was super angry and um so basically like 
Um, I wanted to get away. My dad wanted to get away. And <clears throat> like my brother was always like just super quiet. He didn't really say his feelings and stuff. So, you know, looking back, my dad's kind of like, I feel kind of bad for him because he, we never really talked about it with him. But okay. um, so anyways, we ended up deciding to move away from there just to get away from all the memories and stuff and try and restart fresh somewhere else. So my dad had family on the island, his sister and, and my uncle and cousins and stuff were on the island. So um, we decided to move over there and move in with them and, we, and um, just start a new life all fresh, right? And, and like again, I just, you know, I was just basically the same guy, super mad and just mad at everyone. <laughs> mad at my dad, mad, it was just weird, man. And um, so I just got right back into it again. I was like, acting out in school. I remember I went to this one school, and it was a school my cousin went to, and basically it was the closest school. That's why I went to it. And like, you know, I was, you know, touching my health a bit. Like, my health was really bad, obviously, right? Like, it, mm -hmm. I, you know, like you don't really recover from the treatments I had, especially unless you really know what to do, right? Which I didn't learn until meeting you guys. And um, so I was, I was in rough shape. Like, my kidney function was really bad. My liver function was bad. My my lungs were damaged really bad. My voice box was damaged really bad. Like it's, it's you can still tell it's damaged, but it's a lot better than what it was. Way oh, better. So kids used yeah. to pick way on me. Like, bad. Way better. Yeah, way better. Like, you can barely hear me before. So like, kids would pick on me and stuff. Right? It was it was pretty tough. Yes. And um, so I was just like, I just told my dad, I was like, I don't want to go to the school. I was like, really upset about it. And um, I just told him basically, I'm not going back to the school. And so I did homeschooling for a while. It's funny I kind of forgot about this, but. I did homeschooling and like I wasn't really self motivated at all at the time, so I just yeah, yeah basically just laid on the couch and watched TV and just was like super depressed, you know, like it was bad. And yep. um, I don't know for whatever reason my dad had enough. I guess I wasn't obviously wasn't doing the work right, so yeah, um, he convinced me to go to an alternative alternative school, um, which was like this in this other town away. It was um, it's actually a really nice school, but again, like I just. Um, I was so insecure and so full of anxiety and who knows what, right? I remember, but I just remember being super insecure and like to the point where I was like, didn't even feel comfortable talking to people. And, um, so basically I would like skip school a lot, um, tell my dad I was going to school, but I'd be just like skipping around and, um, I bet these kids like in, in the smoke pit for whatever reason, I don't know why I'd go, oh well, that's right, I'd go there and wait for the bus. And so I'd go in the smoke pit and wait for the bus. I don't know if I was smoking that time. Maybe I was just trying to fit in and be cool again. I don't know. But because I just like, um, yeah, I was just trying to fit in. I guess I was trying to make friends. Uh, so I met a couple of kids there and like basically we just started hanging out and we just really liked each other. I don't know. They liked me for some reason, but um, we started like basically like these guys smoke weed. And so I started smoking weed and skipping school again. And basically like it snowballed to the point where I was, you know, drinking and stuff and my dad wasn't having that because he was super worried about my health still and obviously I was still going to the hospital and for checkups and they're like my weight was super low they're trying to get me to gain weight yeah and it was it was yeah it was pretty rough honestly and um so I was just carrying on like and like I like trying to be normal and trying to have friends and stuff and basically that continued on and like kind of kind of escalated where I was stealing stuff now and just really acting, acting out. And my dad had enough and he said, yeah, you like, basically, like, I can't do this anymore. I can't handle you. We weren't getting along at all. Like, I was being really mean to him and, like, um, I didn't have any respect for him at all. And just it's a long story. I won't get into that too much. But, um, so he, like, told me I had to leave. Um, so I was like, I didn't really know what to do. I, like, phoned my uncle because, like, we were really good friends, really close. Like, he was my mom's brother. Um, like I said, oh, yeah. before, he lives in Kamloops and, um, like it, in my childhood and stuff, he'd come visit us and he'd take me fishing and stuff, which I love fishing. Me and my mom and him would go fishing and, and camper and stuff. So I phoned him up and asked him if I could come stay with him um, and just try and, you know, try and get better, right? And then um, the, he was how old were you at this time? I think I was 14 or 15 by this point. Wow. Okay. Yeah. When you moved out. So I, like, I moved down with him and, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's like my cousin was like, she was uh, like three years older than me and, she was already like heavy into partying and stuff. She like she loved partying and um, she was a heavy drinker, smoker, smoke weed and stuff. I don't remember like before I was it was just a bad idea, honestly. Like if my dad any any sense, he wouldn't have sent me down there. And because before I even came down to the island, 
<clears throat> when I was super young, we stopped in Kamloops and I was smoking weed with my cousin. I forgot about that. Yeah. But, um, so anyways, I, so I moved in with them <clears throat> and basically just started, started smoking weed every day and like drinking with my cousin. Um, I do like kind of high net for my uncle. Um, just so I just was, wasn't doing a regular, I'm just trying to hide it. My uncle be working a lot, so, you know, he wasn't really there much. Um, but yeah, he sort of caught on to what was going on and tried like to lay the law down heavy on me and basically told me like, you can't be doing this with me. Or, or, like, like I'm trying to help you. And uh, he's like, so you're going to come work with me. And so I started working with him and basically like, you know, that went good for a little while. And then, um, I just kind of like, was like, for whatever reason, I just was like, I'm going to do what I want to do. And like, I just kind of, I guess, like, I don't really remember exactly, but I really, the whole time looking back on it, I felt like, like the world owed me. Like I was, I felt like a victim and I felt like I, I gave me the up, gave me the, the free will, I guess, or not, not the free will. I don't really know the right, right word for it, but I just felt like I was owed something, you know what I mean? Oh. And it was up to me and to go and get what was owed to me and I'm just going to do what I want to do because <clears throat> like people don't understand me and that's, you know, so. Sure. Yeah. But I've never like, thinking back on it now, like I, I know why I drank this stuff. I So I should have probably got on this earlier, but um, like that first drink I had, even like, not so much I don't remember it in Alberta when I was seeing my dad's booze, but I remember on the island, when I drank, when I drank, it like really, really loosened me up to the point where I felt super, super comfortable in my skin. And like, mm. I actually felt like I was having fun and I even felt like people yeah. enjoyed being around me. You know what I mean? So that was like, that got me right there. Like I was like, so that like, I just felt like I'd get a buzz on like every day when I woke up, I'd get a little buzz on and then I couldn't go into go about my day. And, um, well, so that's kind of like how I, I did. Mean, this is this is all going on when you're like 13, 14 years old. I wasn't drinking every day, probably until I was like 14. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, like I just yeah thinking back, like, Jeez. yeah, not every day, but I try and drink as often as I could, right? Because it that yeah. felt so good. It's whenever you can get your hands on it. Yeah, exactly. And my dad didn't know I was stealing his, but he was like, because I he, he made it right, so and he had it, like, it. in a big still and stuff, so I just take a little bit. I didn't take mm -hmm. a lot, but um. So yeah, fast forward to and Caleb's, and um, so at this point, like I started selling weed. Um, I'd met some guy who was, you know, he kind of offered me the opportunity. So I started like fronting weed off of him and sell weed. And, uh, and then I met another guy and he was selling mushrooms. And so I started selling mushrooms too, cause like everyone I, everyone I knew like smoking weed and doing mushrooms. And so I just, that's kind of like what I want to do. And I kind of, for whatever reason, I just thought it's what I'm gonna do. And, um, so it kind of like just grew from there. Um, fast forward, I don't even remember how long I was in Canada's, but my uncle got sick and tired of that too, right? Like I was doing super bad. My health was bad too. Of <clears throat> like I had a feeding tube at this point. Like I still didn't gain any weight. So basically wow. they gave me a feeding tube to try and get me to gain weight. And this is crazy. Like yep. thinking back on it, I'd have a feeding tube at night. So I'd like basically, they gave me this stuff to put in this bag and it would, I would just like, <laughs> Basically eat all night long. I have this freaking tube in my stomach, Holy. right? I'm still going out in the day drinking. Like, I had a girlfriend yep. at the time. I don't even know how that happened, but but it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. Like, um, but yeah. So like, yeah. Even with this feeding tube, I was still drinking and carrying on like life was normal, and I was super skinny. And yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, but obviously, just I just wanted to carry on doing what I was doing. Sure. Um, so eventually, again, my uncle, he had enough, right? And he was like, you gotta, you gotta move out. He's like, I'm trying to help you, I can't help you. So he's like, I can't watch you destroy yourself. Yeah. So basically, like, I didn't know what to do at this point, right? I didn't, I wasn't saving any money. I was just, so I phoned up my brother and I knew my brother was doing really good. He came down to visit me and you know, I heard he was doing really good. Basically mm -hmm. doing what I was doing, but like on a way of higher level. Um, so I phoned him up and just asked him if he had any opportunity for me. And um, he said, yeah, he said, yeah, and, like, I'm working with this guy. Um, he, told me, <laughs> you know, he told me a bit about, about him, but I didn't really know the full story. And um, so I go down there, and basically he told me I can, you know, I can stay in this house. And so basically, well, like, I, was, I was basically just thrown into um, house sitting for this guy's weed growing operation, right? Which they didn't tell me at the time, wow. but, but when I got down there and found out, I was excited. You know what I mean? Because I felt like I'd freaking, I'd found it, right? Like, I was... Cause I, already, like, yeah. I, I was already convinced that I was going to be a big time dope dealer and that's what I wanted to do. Right. 
Like I would tell, Wait. like it's funny. I didn't go to school the whole time I was in Canada. I'd go down to the smoke pit and sell joints and stuff down there, and obviously make quite a few friends down there because you know I was a guy that had the weed and they wanted to smoke weed and whatever. That's how yeah. it goes, right? Got it. Got and it. um, so yeah, like when I went down, when I moved to the island, I found out I was. Yeah, I was super excited about that, and I just jumped into it. Um, basically, this guy, like, I'm not obviously not gonna mention any names or something, but like this guy, like, was like big time, like big time into organized crime and stuff. And yeah. um, basically, like, he was one like on the on the island. He was trained by basically this guy. They called him 99, and they called him 99 because in the air where he was taught how to grow weed, he was like Wayne Gretzky. Yep. He was the Wayne Gretzky of the weed growing area, so he was like he was the best guy no one yeah. and he taught this guy who was teaching me. So basically, like this guy was massively successful, and that was sure. just like like a small thing that he did, which I didn't know at the time. But like weed wasn't you know weed wasn't his mainstay, right? Yeah, um, got it. But yeah, maybe like I'm not get into too much of that right now, but I'll just kind of well, tell. You can get into a little bit. You can <laughs> get into a little bit. Just touch yeah, on okay. here. Okay, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> you convinced me. <laughs> yeah. But um, so yeah, basically, like this guy was was thick into it, right? And um, he sure. didn't tell he didn't tell me, right? But uh, it was, uh, it, was a, it wasn't it was got pretty obvious after a while, right? Yeah, have these um mm-hmm. these guys coming over, and I could tell like these guys were um powerful people, let's just say, right? And mm-hmm. um, yeah. they always had like really nice cars, and they're you know they they didn't talk like regular people, let's just say that, right? And okay. um, he'd be bringing in. I, like he got comfortable with me, right? And um, after a few months of staying there, and he kind of would give me a bit more information on, on what they're doing. And um, uh-huh. basically, like these guys were big time like smugglers, um, like heroin, uh-huh. cocaine, all that stuff, right? They would they would take it down to the states because like weed is worth so much in the states. They basically take it down there and trade it for cocaine and bring it back, right? Wow. And, um, because wow. I think it's crazy. Like and so these guys were like, but they were taking tons and tons, right? Which you yeah. know, was, like I was just, I thought like this is exciting, man. Didn't ever think I'd get sure. this big this quick, right? So, <laughs> I was like a kid, right? I'm like a kid at this point, man. Right. I was just blown away, right? And this guy would like, he would do this guy would throw money at me and just tell me to shut the f up and be like, I was doing like this. minimal jobs and he would just throw me a bunch of money and be like, shut the fuck up. Wait, were you like, <laughs> you know, there, 17 or how old were you when that? those were going? I think how I was 18 old? at this point, right? 18. I was wow. still a kid though, right? I was like, yeah. Yeah. And um, so yeah, like basically like I just got thrown right into it. He's just got bring, bringing over like, just telling another story. Like he, he, he would be like bringing over a thousand pounds. And we're like, we're like, where, like, where did all this come from? I found it. Like this, I know that was just great. I don't feel comfortable telling this, but I'm telling it's just, I told it before, but it got erased. But anyways, <laughs> um, Who's... like this guy was like ripping off organized crime gangs and stuff, right? And this right. thousand pounds right. came from the triads. And, um, you know, I, I was nuts, man. And I, like, for whatever reason, like, I, that should have terrified me. You know what I mean? Like anyone in their right mind would have been terrified by that, you know? Sure. And I just, it was, I just thought it was cool. I was like super excited. Yeah, about it. it was just exciting to you. Yeah. yeah. It was like, weird. Well, you, you didn't know better. It was what yeah, you, I just, you know, yeah. weird. Um, it's, okay, so, so what do you mean? So like, he's like, he's, what do you mean ripping off organized crime? Like, yeah, so I, like, I didn't understand it at the time, right? But then, yeah, like this guy, basically what this guy would do was he like found us out. Like as we got closer and closer to him and stuff, and he kind of put us in positions of like where he would like, he would test us. You know what I mean? They would do tests. Yep. Basically, yeah. little things to see if you're if you're trustable, right? So right. Would, right. We would build his trust, right? And um, so he would tell us more and more. And so basically, what he would do was, and this is what he did with us, but we didn't find like I didn't know. But basically, he would mm-hmm. just he would basically teach everyone how to grow dope, and how to grow weed, right? Because he like there was a sm- right. there was smugglers, so they would get sure. like as much weed as they could possibly get. They could move, right? So the more the better. The more they can like right. Like these guys are big time. Like these guys were like the biggest in Canada for sure, right? Wow. And um, yeah, for sure. And um, so basically, like, what he would do is he would set all these people up in little communities and stuff, teach them how to grow weed, and then he would rob them. Yeah, he would, like, like, he would pay them. He would pay them more than anyone else would pay them. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. they could, 
because they were getting way more money for the same right. product because they were shipping to the right. states, which the states paid right. way more. And just because right. they knew, well, they're gonna get, we're gonna get it all eventually, right? And they would mm. take one, they'd let them go for a while, and then they'd take another one, you know, and they wouldn't take, take, takes and shut them down, right? But these guys were just, it was crazy, man. And they, would, they wouldn't do it all themselves, obviously. They would just pay guys to do it and then give them a cut. Wow. So, yeah, but that wow. was crazy. But then what really scared me was when, like, they did this, um, we had in, like, this, the, the place I was living, it was all the same road as the, my dad was living. And basically, like, I built a relationship with all of these people on the road because it was actually the same road I was living when I was a kid. So I knew everyone on the road already, right? Yeah. And wow. um, not everyone, but mostly everyone. Yeah, and, sure. um So basically, like, this one guy who was like, when I was younger, I didn't know what this guy was about, but when I was younger, like, I'd go across, he, just, he lived directly across the street from my auntie's house, and I'd just go over there and, like, play, play basketball and stuff with him. And, but later on, I found out he's, like, he's one of these guys with, with him, right? Like, not, like, he was just a guy that was working for him. But anyways, I, I was friends with this guy. So anyways, he sent me over there. And um, the guy, the big guy I'm working with, he sent me over there to figure out when his stuff is ready, right? Because he didn't want to draw any right. attention. And then Got he it. would just, and then he, so he'd get all ready for it, right? And then basically he ended up ripping him off, right? And then he actually tossed me a bunch of weed for that. And I was like, well, oh, that's just kind of weird. I didn't really feel um, too good about that, right? Like I was, because I got, this guy was my friend, right? And um, yeah, it was just really weird. I was actually kind of scared at that point because I thought he was friends with him too. Um, yep. And that's when it really snowballed. It, it seemed like it escalated from there. And um, like, you know, I, I don't remember how long I was there for. Like, I was just doing a lot of weed and stuff. Like, but it actually kept me from drinking and stuff like that because I was just super addicted to making money at that point. And sure. um, so I was just like sure. smoking weed and I felt like weed was nothing. Um, right. Yeah. But I could tell you a million stories to well, do with that. Well, I mean, that. you know, you, you're, you're used to morphine at 10 years old. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, <clears throat> you know, okay, hold, hold on a second though, because. You, you said you said organized crime. So like, Fair. what? How like what level of of organized crime are we talking about? Because like you you mentioned that he's he just you know he teach these guys like you how to grow pot, you yeah. know, start this business, and then he'd rip them off. But I mean, you know, like you're not exactly organized crime. Yeah. Or, and guys like you aren't that exactly. That wasn't organized like, crime like, at all. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't so, so, with so what did you mean by that then? Okay. Well, okay. Well, basically, like how I found this out. Yeah. Um, let's get that's actually this this story. This guy oh. who was like my neighbor since I was a kid when I was living on the island. Yep. Um, basically, he was friends with um, organized crime and um, like high ups, people that people that no one messes with, right? They're known. Sure. They're known for being ruthless, and, and you don't mess with these guys. Yeah. But anyways, right. he wasn't like he wasn't connect. Like he knew these guys. He's friends with these guys, but he wasn't a member, right? But, right. Like, like, like they respected any him. They organizations? liked him. Like he probably made the money type thing, right? But sure. he wasn't, um, he wasn't an affiliate or nothing like that. And Wait, so, any particular organizations of, of crime that you that you can oh, that you know of? It doesn't matter. All of them. <laughs> but, All of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. But anyways, wow. so I like, like I said, when I, when I got scared, is when this guy they like they lined this guy up to get ripped off, and um, you know, obviously I heard about it and all this, but he came to me and he's like, okay. he was. He knew, okay, so yeah, he knew it was this guy that did it just because what had happened and this guy's not an idiot, right? And, and but, this guy being 99, you mean? No, no, was, this oh, okay. guy, this guy was t trained by 99. This is the guy okay. who okay. I was working with who trained me, but I just right. mentioned the 99 because... Oh, okay, got, okay, got it, yeah. got it. So 99 so I, and the guy that trained you were two different, got it, okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly, but anyways, so yeah, so then this guy, he knew who did it. It was obvious, right? But this sure. guy thought that this guy wouldn't do nothing here. He couldn't do nothing. Hey, can you give fake names? So does everybody who's watching, like, everybody can just follow, like, like you know, Dave, Paul. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll talk. Oh, no, okay. make a cool name, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. The <laughs> one, like, like, <laughs> okay. We'll, call, we'll call one Spider. dude, like, Scarface. Spider. <laughs> How did that get them, like, huh? Okay, well, the one, bad. Like, all to, you know, whatever okay, the word. Guy, the guy I was wearing, but we'll call him Paul. Okay. Pop. Okay. <laughs> well, this is the but okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then this the other guy that he, Paul ripped off. Like, he's not alive anymore, so I just, his name's Rick. His name is Rick, hey. right? And, um, <laughs> got it. So just remember, like, as a kid, I was playing hockey with this guy. Like, I knew his son, and yeah. we'd smoke weed yeah. and stuff, right? So, like, 
I feel like this guy was my friend. So when this had happened, sure. I was like, oh, man, I, I feel like, I feel like, um, Paul, <laughs> Paul mm -hmm. knew this was my friend, right? And this was probably another test. Like this guy, I could go off with this guy, man, but this is like the, one of the smartest guys I ever met in my life. And if anyone ever seen that show, The Pretender, like it was like basically this guy who could put himself in any position, like with doctors, um, you know, dentists, lawyers, judges, and be one of them. And they would think he was one of them. This was how, this guy was an absolute genius. Like, Oh. Whole another level, right? Super, super, super smart. Like, um, I could tell you a million stories about this guy, but he was high level. That's why yeah. he was in the position he was in. And yeah, like this guy was on a whole another level. I have I've only met one guy that was like this guy, right? And that's your dad. Yeah. Like, yeah. And you're all you're a genius too, but that's how. Oh. Like, no, you are. <laughs> you are. I'm the all. I mean, come on. <laughs> well, different, but you're smarter. You better. Anyways, you're... This guy was doing what he was doing, <laughs> so he wasn't that smart. But anyways. So like I said, this guy, so, they, so my buddy knew it was him, right? And mm -hmm. um, obviously, so I, like, I kind of set, set me off. I was like, if this guy can do this to this guy, and I was like, I don't think I can trust this guy even, you know? So I was like, sure. at that point, I'm, I'm, I'm so living it. Paul I'm could rip this. off Rick, then that started to really make you yeah, question and then Paul, could... Paul and wow. relationship yeah, with him. Yeah, I was like, oh boy, like what have I got myself into here? That's the first time I th kind of thought that, right? Right. Yeah. Wasn't and, the smuggling... Was it, was it the, <laughs> all, all the no, robberies? No, no. Then, like, wasn't all the robberies? It was what, it was, this is what Paul did. Yeah. Yeah. Just, nobody does that Rick. <laughs> yeah. God. But so, yeah. So anyways, like, like I said, Rick knew these, knew some pretty heavy up people. So he put yeah. them on a job and um, basically like to find out, you know, to, to get his money back. Right. Right. And um, so basically they came back to, they came back to Rick. And they told him, just leave this alone. Like, just leave this alone. Shut your mouth. We can't do nothing. Yeah. And don't talk about this ever again. So, yeah, like, I'll tell you a couple other stories. But basically, like, this was kind of like where I was kind of, like, a little concerned. Right? I'm sure. living, this guy, living in this guy's house. And then he's trying to get us. And you're 18 at the time. Uh, yeah. It's crazy. You know, pretty young. Yeah. Mind and dealing with, like, lots. Right? Like. Yeah. And this guy was just, I could tell this guy was just all about the money like this guy could never get enough money and yeah he had no problem hurting people Greed. like yeah it's crazy man. i don't even know if this guy's alive anymore like he is i don't want to speak on that but like honestly he was a he's a bad bad dude and sure. um it's just crazy some of the things you do i have to feel anxiety just talking about this just you know right but, <laughs> yeah i, I like, noticed you look a little bit nervous <laughs> <laughs> but yes yeah, so anyways like um like so we were still working with him, obviously, and he set up with a, right. set us up with a couple of things, like a couple of different okay. color things. One of them Got being a, a, two of them actually, two outdoors. So we were doing two at the time, and um, the one got ripped off. You know what I mean? Just before it was done, which is kind of his uh -huh. mo. And um, and then we had this other one that was like way, way later. But it was funny though. The one that got ripped off, it was there was just a small amount was taken, which is yeah, which was like was basically it was and it's funny, you know, like. I could talk about this for hours, but anyways, like, this guy, like, was so high up, he'd have, like, when he sold people stuff, he would have a tracking device in there, so then he would just sell it to them, get the money, and then go steal it back. Like, right. just crazy stuff, right? So And, and then just nobody could touch him. Nobody could touch him. Whoever, whoever no, whenever. Yeah, and anyone who tried to investigate it was just told just to leave it alone. Wow. Yeah. Like, this guy's living in this dude's house at yeah. 18 years old. Dude, I could... On a feeding tube. <laughs> yeah, no, I wasn't on the feeding tube at that point. Okay. That's why yeah, I told I you. Would, I was I actually like drinking one night and some wrestling with a guy and ripped it out. I didn't, oh, yeah, I was geez. crazy. Oh, <laughs> That's a story. Oh, yeah. wow. Painful yeah. was. That was scary, but I was super drunk. I just didn't even go to the hospital or nothing. Oh. And that's, I didn't just, have. It's like, oh, look at that. Yeah. Anyway. Just... Yeah. But so anyway, like, so he ripped this one off and then I was like, we knew it was him, right? We had a suspicion it was sure. him. And got then we it. had this other one that's way bigger, but it wasn't, it wasn't even done. And um, basically that one got to the point where it was just about done. And we went up there one one day and it was completely gone. And um, and then like a couple of days after, my, like I don't remember the timeline on this, but basically he came back and he's like, where's my money? And um, I was like, what do you mean, what money? And he's like, he's like, the, he's like, you guys promised me 20% of that. And, um, oh. and I was like, shit. Right? And I was like, what? Well, they got ripped off. I was like, I don't have nothing right now. And um, it's rough. basically, I don't remember how that went, but I was like scared, right? That was, I don't know, I was weird, but I was at my dad's house at that point. My dad lived just up the road. 
and that's when things got really weird. Um, like he was like he he came like I just remember I don't remember too much about it, but like he was super controlling, right? And he came to my dad's house one day. That was me, and my dad, and his buddy, and um, basically he told me he wanted me to come help him with something. And my dad was like, "No, you can't." And then Dave, and like, so this is Paul. He came, over, he came to your house. Uh, sorry, yeah, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Paul. Gosh. Yeah, Paul came to my house, and um, basically he told me like, I, "I need you, and you gotta come help me." And my dad was like, "No, he can't." And my dad's buddy was there, and he was like this big, huge guy. His name was sure. Norm. That's and good. Um, Norm was like Dave. such a ginormous dude name. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, he was a big boy. Yeah, <laughs> and he was holding a hammer too. And um, Dave stepped up and like started like mouthing my dad off like something fierce. And then like and then Norm just stood up right beside me and lifted a hammer. And he's like, "You better leave right now." And I was just like, "Oh and shit!" And then Bidding. and then this Dave guy never came around again. It was like kind of like you mean Paul. That Paul, yeah, it's pretty big. But anyways, right. yeah. So then that was like that was kind of like the beginning. That was it, right? Like I didn't. Mm. I was like, this guy's messed up, right? Like, sure. this guy's trying to take this to some place I don't want to go. And um, yeah, that's, Hammer. <laughs> that's yeah. That's obviously that scared me a little bit, right? And I remember mm-hmm. I didn't actually move back to Kelms. I think me and my brother, we just started looking for like a place up in the interior. And oh, um, so we okay. just went away for a little while just to make just to see how things were, um, sure. just to make sure that everything's good. And, and um, yeah. so then basically we just ended up coming back and buying a place um, close to close to town, like where my dad was. And mm-hmm. um, basically we just kind of started doing it on our own, growing and stuff. And right, okay, got and, it. <laughs> Definitely didn't learn from the last time. <laughs> Not at all, dude. That's that's I wasn't deterred at all. Um, that's okay. Yeah, it's weird. I just felt wow. Yeah. Well, I wasn't. Yeah, wasn't. That's all okay. I knew how to do. And like, what am I gonna go do? Go. Or to be a gangster, I guess. No, <laughs> but I, I know. Was, I, know. Uh, yeah, I liked it. <laughs> I enjoyed it. You know, it's sure. like you know, I, that was just yeah, man. For whatever reason, that's just that's what my brother was doing. That's what I, you know. Yep. Yep. That's okay. So we're, so that's so Paul, Paul's gone now. Yeah, and right. and you guys are just kind of kicking up your own operation. It sounds like right now. Yeah, we bought a place just like I said, just close to my dad. Um, we yep. made a ton of money, obviously, in that short amount of time, and bought a place, and then um, started doing it in there, and um, basically just started doing my own thing. My brother was always like, my brother was there the whole time, so I mean, he started he started when I left, basically. Um, mm. Like he he it's, yeah, it's crazy. <clears throat> Him and my dad met this guy. Um, shortly after I left, I didn't really think about that before, but yeah. So basically, wow. they were doing all that the whole time I was gone, which was like three years. So obviously, and so my, like this is like after your dad, you know, kicked you out, you moved up to, with your uncle for the per- in the first place. Yeah. While you were gone, they met Paul. Yeah, exactly. And then you came back and you met Paul again on your yeah. own. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He was trying to get the whole Kim family involved. Today. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Yeah, it probably wasn't. In, yeah, who knows. He, who knows what he was planning, right? But obviously, it was he was planning on sticking around because he just started ripping everyone off. Yep. Yeah. Wow. But okay. um, yeah. So then, yeah, we just like I like I said, when I moved. Basically, my brother was um, we bought a house together, but um, yep. my brother was living in town with his girlfriends at the time because my brother was like super super successful, just doing his own thing. Just, Did you say girlfriend or girlfriends? <clears throat> just. His girlfriend he could have been girlfriend. So he. <laughs> I, I thought know. you said like, like I thought you said like girlfriends. No and plural. But like, but like he was super. Yeah, like he was super super successful even then when, like when I came down there, right? So I like I looked up to him and, um, mm. he was a huge influence. And so I like, like I said, I looked up to him and, and he I basically let him do the planning, and so when he said we should buy, I was, I was like yeah, let's do it, and so then um, basically I'm the one in this house. He's in town. And so, you know, at, at this time, I didn't know many people there. So I was sure. getting kind of isolated again. And um, I'd go, it's funny, I don't, why, I, wasn't, I don't know why I wasn't in fear over this guy. Thinking back, I'm not I should have been. But um, so I'd go visit um, this guy who I knew before when I was living on the island, my neighbor, my yep. auntie's neighbor, that guy that yep. got ripped off. I, that's where I would go. I would go work with him because he was growing too, obviously, right? I know, I just go Is, help him. Did you, you hear that crackling? Yeah, I was just going to say. 
Sorry. Are, are you toying Sorry. with something? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, okay. it's okay. It's okay. all good. So, yeah. Um, but little bit else to me, like, I didn't know the guy that well. Sure. So I went down there and started, like, just, like, I would just help him, right? Like, I would trim with him and stuff. And, yeah. Um, and, you know, it's one time I'm working with him. It was just me and him, and I was helping him basically set back up again and get, get his thing going. And um, he, like, he was like, you know what can help you make work or help make your work way better and you work way quicker and stuff like this, right? And I was like, oh, and he's like, mm -hmm. he brought out like this pile of meth and the, it was like, he called it a platter. And um, he's like, here, try this. And I was like, I didn't know why. I didn't even think about it, but I just did. And um, <clears throat> it's weird. Like he said, like he gave, he, he gave it, gave me it, gave me this platter. It was basically like, it was like a vice grips on the a broken light bulb. Right? <laughs> Super oh good. I'm like, wow. he like, dude, this is crazy. And then he like melted a, I don't know how much he melted in there. And then he, then he walked away. And um, he probably, who knows, he probably was planning it, right? Mm -hmm. So I blew this out. I did a huge one and I blew it out. And I was like, holy, like, just, it was like the most powerful thing I ever done in my life. And it was just like the most amazing feeling ever. Besides when I did wow. morphing or whatever, right? But different though. Yeah, sure. It was like a huge rush. Oh. I just like. And then how old are you this time? Uh, 19, I think. Probably 19. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was 19. Uh, but crazy. And eight, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it was it was crazy, man. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. Okay, and like so so you just you just get out of the you finally find yourself a, a way to get out of the the smuggling yeah. operation. <clears throat> Yeah. So barely by the skin of your teeth, somehow you come out of it alive, and then you're doing your own thing, and you bring on a partner, and then he's like, "Hey yeah. man, you know, let's just let's let's try meth." Yeah, no, this wasn't. No, like, he okay. was a partner. Uh, I don't know. This guy wasn't a partner at all. Like, it's, I don't know why. Okay. I didn't even like. Like I said, I, I like I was greedy, right? And this guy sure. was doing the same thing I was doing, and he he offered me money to go help him, right? That's how like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay got and basically, it. too, like, the reason like we would do that was we were only so crazy thinking that I've been saying this now we would only work with people that we knew because you mm -hmm. don't want to bring too many people into what we're doing of course but um and then so yeah anyways this guy gives me this meth platter walks away Sh should we call this... this guy like Steve or like Phil no, or... this is or... this is Rick this is this, this is Rick, Rick from okay. before oh okay dude oh, this is a Rick Rick came back this Rick. is All the right. guy All right. had... this is so sad man this is yeah. pisses me off on how much of a piece of shit I was back then but I, right. I set this guy up to get ripped off, you know what I mean, basically. Oh, this guy was no. my friend, and I was doing yeah. intel, you know, you know, like, what the hell? Anyways, I was a yeah. drug guy, uh, like, just a messed up individual. <laughs> yeah, sure. And um, sure. so anyways, I'm working with this guy now, and he brings over this huge meth, meth thing. Maybe it was revenge, who knows? But <laughs> it gets me hooked on meth. And, um, yeah, like I said, I was, like, I was pretty much addicted right then and there, but I wasn't doing it every day. Um, right. Like, this is what happened, like, so I did that huge one, I blew it out, and I was just like, bing, and then, so he left, he walked away, and however long he was going for, I don't know, but I just kept smoking and smoking, and I couldn't put it down until it was gone, and oh, then, wow. um, yeah, and then I was up for three days straight, like, and on the third day, it was like, I was, it was complete psychosis, I was like a I whole bet. SWAT team outside my house, and like, it was brutal, I was phoning up my dad, and I was like, there's a SWAT team outside my house, and, wow, yeah, he came down there, and he's like, there's no one there, like, are you, are you on drugs? Like no, no, like no, we don't see him. It was crazy. Like I saw laser beams and everything. There was nothing there. And that's where, like, that was my first experience with um psychosis, right? And um, so it scared me. It really scared me. And but I couldn't get that thought of doing it out of my head that high. And I was like, sure, I'd love to do that again, just one, you know. Yeah. And um, eventually I went back to his house and I did it again, and it was just yeah, it was bad again, and. I just, yeah, I was so high in his house. I remember just being kind of like the biggest, this was so, it was a low, low time. And um, I was like, what am I going to do? I don't want to be up for three days and go through this again. And so I asked him, I was like, what can I do? Like, well, I, I just, I told him what happened last time. I was like, I don't want to go through this again. And so he gave me a bunch of Ativans. And so I like, so I took all these Ativans and I drove, started driving home, <laughs> right? Like, I didn't know what these things were going to do to me. And mm -hmm. I like blocked out, like, like, do you while driving? Really, yeah, I blacked out. Oh. Like literally, this is hilarious. I drove, all, I drove, I drove all the way home. Like, don't remember any of the drive at all. 
and I literally blacked out like one telephone pole before my house and hit the telephone pole, bounced off it, like parked, parked it in my drive. Like it was funny, like I lived like, it was, it's hard to describe it. Like yeah, I had no drive. It was just like, kind of like, I was like right on the road. It was like an old travel road. There was only three people yep. on this road. <clears throat> so I like, it was parked right beside my house and stumbled and I don't even remember going in the house or how I got in there, how I got back. Let's, let's, so, it's like that scene from Wolf of Wall Street when, when crazy, the guy like man. thinks he drives a Lamborghini home perfect. Yeah, it thinks it's fine. No scratches. He's it's like enough. crashing into everything. <laughs> Super messed, yeah. Why? So I, my truck was wrecked. I remember, it was my brother's truck too, so he was pissed. And um, Dude, I can imagine. Yeah. So I like to stay away from that scene for a while. I just I was like, I can't go to that guy's house because I can't. It's too powerful, right? I can't say no once I'm there. Right. It's just, right. it was overwhelming. I couldn't fight it even though I wanted to. Yeah. And, um, so basically, like, Trent, like, uh, I, I fly for as long as I could and then started doing it again. And it was just crazy. Really? I like, fight it for a little while and start doing it again. And sure. Then she got to the point where I was just like, I don't even want to know how I quit or how, and it's crazy trying to think back on how I quit doing that, but I don't, I don't even really remember how I, just stayed away from this guy somehow and God. fought the earth somehow. It's just God, yeah, basically. Yeah. But um, so yeah, I just ended up um, things went really well for a while. I guess I just smoked weed and basically ended up selling this, selling this house and what well, I thought was going good, right? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. sold this house yeah. and made a big profit on it, and then um, moved like bought five acres. Basically, it's kind of a funny story I'm gonna tell real quick here. But basically, like, we were growing on uh, just off these guys' property, like this, these farmer friends of ours, my, my dad's friends. Like he known, yep. him, he'd known him for since since we moved there, basically, because they're farmers and all farmers, like sure they know each other, right? Yep, yep. And so basically, like we were looking after we sold the place because if we only sold it because we could make it huge. We just listed it super high, and someone bought us, so we sold it. So now yep. I'm living at my dad's again. He wasn't too happy, but right, his wife was pissed. <laughs> But yeah. anyways, yeah. I'm back in my dad's and then house. And how old are you now? I have like 20. Like, I'm time okay. lines pretty messed up. Because I was, but anyways, okay, sure. so I moved back from my dad's house, which was just up the road from freaking Rick's house, right? It was just a bad move. And uh, um, I'm, it's kind of weird. I don't know why, but I'm re- I just went bought a trailer and I'm living in a trailer at my dad's house, right? Got tons of money. I could have, you know, rented a place for, I don't know, I can't remember why I was staying at my dad's. Yeah. Kind of weird. Sure. I had dogs and, and stuff th- too. So this is while you have the five acres that you Maybe. bought. No, no. The, yeah, I didn't. Have, sorry, I kind of jumped around there. I just want to tell okay. this. I just want to tell this story that's attached to five acres. Okay. Mm, okay. Basically, do, it. do your thing. So yeah. So basically, I went. My son, my my dad was friends with this farmer who had the five acres, and um, yep. we didn't have a place to do our thing, like the outdoor thing, at this point. So basically, we just can. Con- we just like convinced him to let us do it at his place, but just off his property. <laughs> and he's just a farmer, right? Like, he knew about weed and stuff. Yeah. Can't see you guys. I don't know if that's... Oh. Oh, we can still see you. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, yeah. So, basically, I just, can, me and my brother convinced him to let us do it there. We can give him... But, so, I think we gave, like, we offered him five grand or something. And they just hey. had no idea, right? Like, what we were able to do there. And um, sure. it was, like, literally, like, just off their fence line. And we just set up a massive outdoor grow operation. And, um... Wow. Yeah, it was, it was, it was retarded. It was rude. And so anyways, I was scared them to the point where they're like, you guys, basically they're like, can you guys please buy our property? Like, we don't want to be here, right? Right? So it was super wow. sad, man. So we basically scared them into selling us their property and um, they own, and it's owner finance. They just like, must have like they... walked out one morning, go to the fence line, see this massive crop oh, of was... hot plants. Yeah, and it's been I, like, I, oh, I, I invited the owner back. I, I was all proud of it. I invited the owner back there to look at it, and he was just like, oh, my God. He had no idea, right? Wow. Yeah. So they got super scared, wow. and they are like, we got to get out of here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, they they were being smart. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. They could Good yeah, for them, honestly. Yeah. Just so. I mean, making the best of a bad situation. Yeah, definitely. Right? Just, sure. I was just super addicted to making mine, right? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't justify what you did, but anyways, yeah. totally different person so yeah, back we were then. Yeah, like, score. We can get this place owner financed, and I think we put fifty grand yeah. cash down, and probably. So yeah, it's a pretty good deal, and um, <laughs> basically, yeah. We so we were, we were doing that, and um, 
long story short, it was so, so, so massive. Mm-hmm. Basically, like, I don't know, like, what exactly the story is, what had happened, but apparently, they, like, it was a huge, ginormous purple patch. There's a purple pine barrier growing, so it was just, mm-hmm. like, a picture, like, picture, like, two acres of just straight purple. Oh, right. Like, I've never heard that, that, right? In the fall, everything's dead. Mm-hmm. There's, like, a huge purple patch, like a sea of purple, right? <laughs> <laughs> No one's going to notice that. Wait, sorry, so what, what's the purple from? From the, from the pot. It's purple or, pine berries, the weed. Oh, they leave yeah. behind, like, in the soil? Why is this, this, this particular the buds, strain? Well, the whole plant the tree, Okay, purple. so the bud. Yeah. Okay, so then there's a bunch of, like, little buds on the ground just forming, like. No, like, the, like the plants. The, oh, we're plants. Dropping, we're plants and eight foot tall plants okay. out arm to arm, like, yeah. bush, like, wow. sea of purple. Like, a sea of green that's just green. This is a sea of purple. Yeah. So, anyways, they're taking, like. This is the story anyways, but apparently they found it. The cops found it because um, there was like they're doing seismograph or something, taking pictures of the river. And mm. at the very corner of this picture, like they had it in the paper and stuff. Um, and it was on the news. It was even on the Vancouver News. It was the biggest bust in Lake Calhoun history. It's kind of wow. a proud moment. But anyways, um, so, <laughs> so, anyways like, so on the very edge of this picture, was this yep. was a like the corner of our purple purple patch right? no way yes that's hilarious so the, wow the that's how they got are, you guys yes they apparently like, it, it's like it's like how they story. got a phone like on tax evasion <laughs> you know just completely that's wow yeah that's but get this though that like, and funny. I mean, you can probably even still find it on the internet but um basically like there was no destruction date there was no court case they never charged us you know what i mean and like wow. and that's just that's like one other thing, but basically like corruption, right? Like, yep. They yep. Sh- they, yeah, we looked into all that, but basically, even our neighbor was like he knew someone that owned this coffee shop or whatever in town with these cops or whatever. But long story sure. short, it was just mm-hmm. it was stolen basically. Wow, and so they, so so okay, so so they they saw they found your your crops. Yeah, and yeah. Then they rolled in. Came in and I was like six in the morning when they rolled in, like six pop <laughs> cars, six <laughs> trucks. Right, I'm too sleep- early for this. Yeah, I'm sleeping in bed, right? Like I come, <laughs> I, I come through. Like and I just heard a bunch of action out there. Like I saw yep. like a convoy rolling up, and I lived at the end of a cul-de-sac, like a dirt road. Yep. Like so, I was like, oh, what the heck's going on? And I was like, I jump wow. out of bed, and I look out my out my window, and then like, my heart just sank. Oh, it's funny too because like the night before, like just before it got dark, my dogs were going off in the back, and they never go off. Right, and they're barking and stuff and barking and barking, but they wouldn't go up in there, which was kind of weird. They wouldn't mm. go to where whatever was going on back there. Yeah. And it was the very next morning when they showed up, so they were back wow. there assessing it out, obviously, right? Must and, be um, Yeah. And so yeah, they rolled up, and I was just like at like. So I was super scared right obviously I was like I knew what they were there for sure. I found uh, uh, what there's no yeah. right there, there? Yeah. I, 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 I don't I don't go back there I found a fly that's I'll what I said for. that's yeah. exactly really? what I said yeah really no yeah. way yeah and they're like well wow. there's, a, there's a trail going right back there I'm like well it's not my trail it's probably a cow trail or something like farmers used to live here they had cows and stuff right and um like for like they, they could like they could have so easily just waited back there for us to come back there and they're like boom yeah, you know what I mean they sure. asked a couple lame questions and they're like, "Oh, the sure it's not yours." I'm like, "No," and like, I was like, "I was like, I just didn't want to let that go, right?" So I phoned yeah. my brother. I phoned my brother and he's like, "No, we're telling we got family coming over. They gotta leave." They can't. Like we're just in a panic, right? Because it was <laughs> it's all the police you got family coming like, over. Like, there's so much money there, right? And we were wow, literally that day. Know. That day, literally, we were gonna start trimming it, right? But yeah, just yeah. devastated. Wow. Nah, nah, like, 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 how how big was your crop? Do you think? Go. Dude, it was, it was well over a thousand pounds. Wow. <clears throat> well over, they, over, they, they, they valued it at like three million or something. Which they always wow. overvalue it, you know what I mean? It's like, but it was at least, wow. yeah, it was at least a thousand pounds because we did it again the next years, but we spread them out. And um, this time we like, before we had like over 800 plants and um, these plants weren't even nearly as big and we got two pounds a plant. Wow, 120 wow. pounds off of 60 plants. So okay, and, and so is this like is this the fall of the the drug empire? This this big bust. This is the beginning of the end for sure. Like kind of like a super, like as far as I'm concerned, anyways. Yeah, <clears throat> like I had like a, a girlfriend and stuff at the time I was living with me, and basically sure. um 
I was just super, just, we were devastated, man. Like, that was like a, a retirement package right there, basically. We had all sorts of plants. Wow. We put in over 20 grand just to, just to, um, like, for the soil and nutrients and stuff, right? Right, yeah. sure. Just, we were water, we were the freaking hat, we were watering that thing. We had hoses out there, like, literally from the house out to the patch. We, were, we had to fill up these, because they were drinking so much water, these things are massive. We made yep. a mistake of putting them in pots. It's like, a pot plant, like, yeah, dude, that's yeah, huge. Yeah, and they're in way too small pots, too, so it was like, can you get into it? But we had to water these things all day, every day, eight hours a day, just because that's oh, how quick they're drying up, right? But they were wow. huge, biggest buds I ever seen in my life. But anyways, so um, yeah, like I just, I don't know what what really happened. I think my brother, I know my brother was like doing like doing heavier drugs. Yep. Maybe just chipping away at it because I know he was selling cocaine and stuff too, which he wasn't open about. But I found out later, so I'm sure he's yeah. probably doing cocaine and stuff too, and. <clears throat> Basically, like, um, like we we bought a business at that point. We're like, we're like, my brother was like, I'm out of this. I guess I wasn't because I just was still selling weed and stuff. But he had family and stuff sure. at the time. He had kids, so I mean, he was he was that he told me he's got to get out of this. He can't be doing this anymore. Yeah, definitely. Right? And it. I was like, I wasn't ready to quit. Um, yeah, so I was yeah. Like, I'll yep. buy a business with you. Like we bought a, we bought an insulation business. Got I'm gonna it. do yeah. that, which was a mistake. I should have never gotten into that, but right. Um, basically, like, so we started working together doing that, and, um, basically, uh, so we hired up on this guy, we didn't hire him, actually, my brother hired him, he was a friend of his, he knew him, and, um, this guy's no longer alive either, and he was a drug addict, right, so, yeah. Trevor was his name, and, but, right. yeah, he was a drug addict, so that went, like, that was a really bad idea, I didn't know at that the time how bad it was, but they were, they were doing oxycons and stuff together, and okay. there was this one day after work, and they were just like in such a good mood, so happy and stuff. I'm like, what's going on with these guys, right? Yeah, what's up and, with that? Yeah, and so I was questioning them, bugging them. I was like, what are you guys on? Like, what's going on here? And then yeah. they told me, and they were like, you want to try some? Which is like, and I was like, yeah, because I want to fit in and be a part of like whatever, right? Sure, and sure. So I tried, and just crazy, man. It was like, that was the morphine, right? <clears throat> that right. was the high, and I was like, well, I found it again, and I was, that was it. That right. first day I tried them, I did I did oxycons every day. Wow! Like, every day I was I got a bunch of oxycons, and I was like, my brother was selling them to me, which is pretty messed up too. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah, and he was like enabling, enabling that kind of behavior. Yeah, but he like he so, was addicted to money too, and he was a drug addict, and uh, yeah, like whatever, right? And that's what they do. Yep. Yeah. And um, so, like I said, I was full fledged, um, obviously, got an addict at that point. Um, right. And it was like, well, honestly, I thought it was great because I felt like I could function even better on that, stay up longer. Yeah. And it was crazy. It was weird. But um, it didn't affect my business at all, which was, you know, probably not a good thing. Um, and like, the funny thing is funny too. Like, my, I guess my brother was really struggling. To, like, I forgot about this soon. So many things going on, but anyways, yeah. my brother was really struggling, unbeknownst to me, and he was like, I gotta get out of here. He's like, I need time away, yep. blah, blah, blah. Right. <clears throat> I think maybe, um, oh yeah, that's right. Um, I think like someone died in the family. So we went to Kamloops. Oh. Yeah, oh, so man. Like, someone, we went to Kamloops. I think it was my grandparents or something. Someone died there. Sorry, okay. I can't even remember. It's kind of weird, but I was heavily into all these cons at this point. And so my brother was like, I'd go down there and stay there for a while. Oh, God. Oh, that's crazy. No, that's not true at all. This is what happened. Yeah, after that bus, I went and stayed down there for a while just to let things cool down. That's right. And then my brother came down just because he was really struggling with doing drugs. So he came down there trying to think maybe he can get off him. And yep. um, so basically, like, that's kind of when things kind of really got out of control was when I got the Oxycons and became a full-fledged drug addict, basically. Sure. Do it every sure. day and all the inhibitions, inhibitions were out the window at that point. And right. um, I remember moving back after things cooled down a bit. Yep. I just got right back into it again and started selling like party drugs and stuff like that, which was which is a bad idea. Like I said, I was yeah. like a, I there was no no filter this time. I was just like, so I'd be going to raves and stuff and just like at this point you. I was like, just flaunting it right like I was. Um, just sure. being the life of the party, right? I was out of control, honestly. Uh, and so I started dealing with Got the party it. drugs and, uh, you know, ecstasy and stuff like that and ketamine and yep. I was dipping and diving in that. 
and um, they just escalated. Um, then I, I started dealing with like stolen goods. Like it was funny. Like I just got the more money I made, the more money I, I wanted to make. Right, so I just started doing all this other stuff, just yeah. trying to make right. more money. Snowball, which is, okay. Which was a bad idea. And um, so basically, I started dealing in stolen goods as well, like fencing stuff. And mm. because my brother was doing that, too, and he was making real good money doing yeah, it. Cool. I saw that. Right? It. I was just I was a follower, honestly. Like, so I thought I'll give that a try, right? Um, so I started dealing with, like some 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 nefarious people, like as far as like drug addicts go, because these guys were the ones yep. stealing all the stuff, and so that was that was bad, right? And I started hanging out with this guy, like buying a lot of stuff off him and here's this guy was just doing big things every day like stealing stuff and I'd go and buy stuff off him and I'd meet up with him and buy stuff off him and um, he was yeah. a harsh crackhead and he would just I should have I don't know I just didn't know him better but um, I would let him do it in front of me and it was just a, this one day I asked him if I could try it and obviously that was really and, bad and how old are you now? really I don't know man honestly I couldn't tell you at this point I was probably it's hard to say man Realistically, I'd play 20, 24, maybe. Okay. You okay. know, but I'd done cocaine and all that stuff before that, but it was never. For whatever reason, I just never really liked cocaine. But, yeah, that's um, good. <laughs> yeah, at this point, I was still, I was still doing oxycons every day and, you know, partying wow. as, as often as yeah. I felt like in Aussie, um, doing the ecstasy and stuff because I really liked that. Again, at least I felt like I functioned way better on it. But then once I started this crap, that's when I mean, again, it was like super, super powerful, like even way more powerful than the meth was. And it was yep. just like a huge team and I didn't, didn't, you know, wasn't in any shape, way or form to, able to contend with. And yep. again, it scared me. Like it really, really, really scared me just how powerful it was. Um, but it put the fear of God in me, right? And same thing, I fought it, right? And um, um, for whatever reason, I knew I couldn't be around this guy because past experiences I knew if I was around this guy I'd be doing it but it just ate at me man and it just ate at me and he called me one day and I was like yeah me I made up a story in my head I like you know whatever and um I wasn't even thinking about buying stuff off when I was driving down I was just thinking about like, smoking crack right yeah. and um it's just gradually just it's no balls like that you know and basically before I knew it I was smoking crack every day right I just again it was just like I'll just get a little bit and I'm like I'm just gonna do this much right like I said, I had a, like a girlfriend living with me for probably a couple of years at this time. I don't remember exactly, but... <clears throat> and um, so I was hiding my drug usage from her. Like, she she had her suspicions and stuff, but, like, me and my brother didn't talk about it with anyone. Like, because we were, like... Everyone really respected us, and they looked up to us and stuff because we were, like, really successful in that town. It was a pretty small town. And um, so basically, like, I just, I just hit it for as long as I could. Until it was like no longer hideable, like I was losing a lot of weight and I wasn't around. It was just, you know, like it got to the point where I just couldn't control it and I couldn't. <clears throat> it got to the point where I just go back and more, get more, get more. And yeah. um, like I would show up a day sometimes. Like it was so sad thinking back oh. on it now. Like my girlfriend was just, the stuff I put her through was just absolutely horrific. Even my dogs, too, and I was, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so it just got to the point where, you know, I don't know how long that went on for, honestly. It honestly probably wasn't that long because it got out of control pretty quick to the point where I realized, like, I cannot manage this. It's not manageable. I can't even, yeah. like, I can't even go into the bank to pay my bills. Like, I'm so messed up. And, like, I still thought I was hiding it from everyone, though. I didn't think anyone knew, but everyone was talking about it. Like, yeah. they wouldn't talk to me sure. about it. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't yeah. talk to me about it, but they, everyone was talking about it, I found out, right? And, right. Um, Like, my dad came to me, and, like, I, I know, basically, I was crazy. Sadly, sad. I ended up like renting a trailer close to town, and I told my girlfriend it was just like a spot to be right into town because that's where all my business is. And basically, it was just like in my mind, it was just a, a spot where I could comfortably smoke crap, which is right, very messed yeah, up, yeah. really True. sad. And that's when it really got out of hand, where I was just be holed up in this trailer for days on end, just smoking crap, right? And you call me, yeah, I could tell you so many stories in that, but like, I, I'd be like, I'm there high speed chases that weren't even real you know what I mean like that I, I was like crazy like for people that don't know but like I'd be in psychosis pretty much all the time at that point right and sure. um I'd be driving <clears throat> still like dealing or whatever which is absolutely insane and I'd hear like sirens and you know and that's 
I literally hear sirens and I'd look and look in my mirror and see like cops behind me, the cherries and berries and the whole deal, right? But wasn't even there, it wasn't even happening. And um oh. so I had a lot of few scary ex- experiences like that, like accidents. Um yep. when things got really out of control, I literally totaled it was nine vehicles in two years. Um just yeah, it was Dang. crazy. Like it's a lot. Yeah. It's amazing I survived, you know. Like, right here. Yeah. One with my girlfriend in it too is really bad. Oh, I was out of control. Like my anger was out of control. I was just completely. I was just a demon, demoniac, right? Like, sure. I was about racing to town one time. Like I was actually with my girlfriend this time too, and I was just I was all pissed off and it was raining because I was just like just addicted to making money and just it was crazy. But anyway, so I was racing to town. Yep. It's raining out, and I don't know how many days up for at this point. But I <clears throat> lost control, started fish tailing, and like just ran this car off a bank. And um, basically, like, it was like a, the grace of God, I like, survived that. And, like, basically, just mm-hmm. we got to the bottom of the bank, there was a massive tree there. And just before we got to this tree, it, like, went to the side and stopped. Like, there's absolutely then, no reason for it. But that was, like, kind of scared me. And it really pissed her off and scared her at the same time. And she was like, this guy's yeah. out of control. And um, so she's yeah. like, I'm leaving. I can't deal with this anymore. And so that's when I was like, okay, I got to try and do something here. I didn't want to lose her. I've been with her so, for so long. And, um... So I told her I'd go to detox, um, which was like, you know, this a lame attempt to at try and get clean, basically. I mean, I was super messed up, and it wasn't until I got to detox I realized, like, how bad I was, like, once I was no longer on drugs, because uh, the drugs just kind of, like, like, kept me going and gave me energy. And once I was in detox, yeah. I know that the tier detox is, like, a harsh, harsh thing for your body, because I was physically yep. addicted to all these things, right? Yeah. And when I got to detox, I was, like, felt like I was dying, and I was brutal when well, and, like, and the, the detox that they do it's all it is just you know cutting out the stuff like you're not, you're yeah, not doing just, any more drugs they just don't give you dope yeah. anymore and they give you a bunch of right um, uh, government dope yep right and eventually they you know they wean you off that and then they kick you out like when you're still basically dope sick off the, the last dope they gave you know what i mean so it's like yeah it's right. crazy and um so i like I'm, I'm in there and i'm just like struggling like i just it was basically like a struggle just to get through it, you know? It was weird. Yeah. I had, you know, I was just kind of like doing it for my girlfriend, honestly. Um, I really had no intention of like trying to get off a dope forever. I just thought, you know, I just need right. to get, you know, I just, and I'll chip away at it again, right? Like, I was, well, I was just get it back under control. Yeah. Or yeah, I just get back, back under, under control, control again, right? That's yeah. what my sure. insane yeah, mind was telling me. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. You know? I'll just, I'll just limit, limit can, crack to twice stop. a week. I can stop it whenever first I want to, anyways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so that's what was my mindset. And I, I this is hilarious. Oh. This isn't hilarious, but this is crazy. It's how insane a drug addict is. So basically, like, I'm I'm leaving detox now, and so I'm I'm setting up a call to like get a ride out of there, right? Which you know, like I literally found the guy who I'm smoking crap with. You know what I mean? That's so hilarious. <clears throat> absolutely insane, right? And that's why I know what's gonna totally happen. Not. Yeah, it's completely insane. So obviously, I'm getting super high on the way back to my house, and my girlfriend there, and it's just like right. holy smokes. Right. I just felt that was a low, like a super low. And then so I just got back to my house and I'm just like, yeah, I'm not going to touch it, right? That was my mind. It was like right around yep. Christmas time too. Just crazy thing on it. But, um, so yeah, it's just like, there was obviously out of control. got rid of control again. And it got yep. to the point where... Under control. Yeah, mm-hmm. like she was, for whatever reason, I begged her to stay and stuff like that. Like I yeah. didn't want her to leave. And yep. she just finally had enough and was like... And I gotta go like this. You're not gonna get better. And um, she's like, and I was like, I just told her I was like, if I go to treatment, like, do you think you're gonna come back and all this, right? And like, I asked her if there's any hope there. And True. she kind of like probably just did it for my to try and help me out, right? She said, yeah, if I go to treatment, she'll come back. And <clears throat> so that's what I did, right? And I was like, I was basically losing my house at this point because I could no longer. I was, wasn't even making the payments anymore. My brother was just he was completely out of control. Like he was off. I didn't see him for forever, you know. I mean, I can't remember. Like he was yep. sticking to it just like I was, right? But yep. So I'm, um, yeah. I wasn't making my mortgage payments anymore, and so it's like, I was like, yeah, okay, I gotta, I gotta do something here. My dad was like aging massively quick. I could see it in him. So I my bet. life was just an absolute mess. And it's like I gotta do something here. So I like, I basically I went to treatment. I got gave treatment a crack, right? And I was just so consumed like with with addiction and stuff. Like even though I. You know, I was trying to save everything. Like I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready yeah. to quit doing drugs, and I like I wasn't even. Dude, I'd be in. It's crazy, I'd be in treatment, 
and now there's like 12 steps of AA or whatever. Right. Um, even though I had like, that was like, it obviously like, I basically stand in cabins from, you know, far away from where I lived. It was like way, way on the other side of the island, right? So, you know, but this is how crazy this was. Um, I was still like thinking about doing dope every day and stuff. And like, it was just, it was crazy, man. I just really wanted to do dope even all the time I was in there. Really? One time I'm at the library because like after a certain amount of days, you get like a, a pass or whatever where you can go out with some guys. Yeah. And at the library, this guy came out to me who I could tell was obviously a drug addict because you can just know, right? When you're sure. a drug addict, you know. And so I like yeah. kind of like, I like waited until he walked away from like my group or whatever. And that's so crazy. I walked up and I was like, hey, buddy, can you get me some heroin? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so like, I got heroin and he even in, oh, like in the middle of treatment, just on your day pass. In the middle of treatment, I'm doing heroin in the bathroom. No. And they're like, it was so sad. Yeah. And then, did, and, did uh, they pick it up that, that you were no, high? No, it's like my body, like the guy who I was with, like I'm in the bathroom, the library bathroom doing dope off a tinfoil, right? I don't know where I got the wow. tinfoil. I think I was off of my pack of smokes or something. Like, mm. it was crazy, man. But anyways, so yeah, this guy, like one of my buddies was knocking, the guy I was friends with in treatment was knocking doors. Like, hey, Bill, are you okay in there? And he probably just could sense something was going on, right? Yeah. So like when I got back to treatment, they tested me, they piss tested me, but for some strange reason, I passed the test. Interesting. They really, they really love wow. me there, so maybe they just like was like <clears throat> waved and thought maybe this guy might pull it together or whatever, right? But yeah. um, you know, obviously I didn't, and um, so I just got right back into it as soon as I left treatment. Basically, um, I was looking for dope on the bus home. It was just so sad. Wow. Um, yeah, I convinced my dad to rent me a hotel, and I just basically got right back into it again, and um, you know, it's like. Basically, I was one step away from homelessness, and it wasn't long before I was homeless. And um, sure. so I was. This is my first trip of being homeless. Basically, like um, I so I couldn't afford. I couldn't even really afford crack anymore. But so right. I was just, you know, just this brutal. I was basically stealing every day, all day, every day. I'd be stealing just to support my habit. Well, and like well, got yeah. got a bit of extra money not to get crack. But <clears throat> basically, I was just doing. Um, at this point, I was just doing uh, fentanyl. Because it was the cheapest, In- way cheaper than Oxycons and um, fentanyl and, and crystal meth because meth was super cheap. And um, so basically, like, I just continued on as long as I could, basically, as long as I could afford to do drugs, which is sad, right? That's just when when you're completely consumed, like, as long as you can get drugs, you think you're okay, right? Because that's yeah. that's literally all I thought about from the moment I woke up to, to when I blocked out and came to, like, because that's the point I was at. Where I wasn't going to bed, I was blacking out, and or I'd just get so exhausted where I would just be like, you know, I'd just lay down or whatever. But um, like at at this point, sometimes I'd be up like for ten days at a time, like wow. eighty three pounds soaking wet. Like I don't even know how I was continuing. And this happened multiple times, like yeah, like this happened for like yeah. So I was like, a, I was like, and uh, like basically, I got kicked out of, cause like I just go into stores and stuff. Like I try not to steal from people. Like it wasn't really a. A mindful thing it was just like it was more dangerous right so i would just sure. and it was stealing from stores was just so easy for me and um yeah. just because i knew guys that were doing it they'd tell me how to do it yeah so i was just doing that for a long time until the stores caught on they're like as soon as i'd walk in they'd be like get out get out you know what i mean yeah. so I, right. that was blown and um so then i just start going to other cities and go to victoria when i'm one it was just like i i just but i'd get caught right because i was just completely out of it so I'd get like charged and then um, they say they'd release you on a promise to appear and like I was just so out of it I just wouldn't appear right so then they'd yeah. I'd have a, a warrant out for my arrest and you know I I didn't know about any of that you know like, how am I going to hear I got a warrant for my arrest yeah right and then so I just get picked up randomly and they'd like alright going straight to jail today Mr. Cam right I'm just like oh god and that's funny like the whole time I'm just I'm, like the biggest thought in my mind is like I'm not going to have any dope and I'm going to get sick you know, mm-hmm. so that's like, that was the biggest thought in my mind. Sure. Because I knew I was going to city cells and I'd probably get out, you know, if it was a Friday, I'd get out on on Monday, like, you know, because they'd, yeah. they'd put me in front of a judge or whatever and I'd get out. And um, How many times do you think that you were arrested? Um, honestly, I like, honestly, bro, it was quite a bit, like, realistically, I can't remember, though, but like, it was a lot. And I'd always be just out of it. That's how I got arrested. I'd just be out of it. Mm-hmm. But probably at least nine times. Wow. You know, yeah. And like I said, lots of times I just, you know, they'd read me up a promise to appear. 
for a while until yeah. I just didn't appear. Like, dude, I wrapped up 20 charges before I actually went to jail. You know okay, mean? yeah, I was just thinking, charges. like, when you said, when you charges, said yeah. nine times to jail, I was like, that's a yeah, so pretty like jail, small number. No, that's arrested. You're like, you don't go to jail. Yeah. In yeah, Canada, it's right so right. slack, man. Unless you're, like, a threat to, you're a physical threat to someone, they're going to give you slaps on the wrist, right? Until right. Like, until you just made it enough. Right? Yeah. And then that was, they just saw I wasn't even going to show up to court. So that's when they were like, and I was thinking, oh, I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to be all right, you know? And then I find out, they're like, oh, so you're going straight to uh, Wilkie. Hey, Mr. Kem. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to go get a promise to appear and you guys will let me all, out, right? And they're like, no. All of a sudden, those promises to appear yeah. just going away. <clears throat> so then they like kept me in the city cells till the weekend. Or are you, are you hearing a, a rattling or something? <laughs> no. Doing a little <laughs> rattling again. Oh, sorry. I just, you got to cut me off. That's okay. All good. But anyways, so question, I... Go ahead, Surreal. Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm sure, like, you know, you mentioned, like, a big part of, like, why you even got into drugs in the first place. Yes, to ease the pain, escape from reality. But also a huge part was um, to kind of feel like you were fitting in, to kind of, like, getting connected with people and stuff. Do you think yeah. that part of the <clears throat> that's reason why, how... That's why... Of, of how... Yeah, that's, like, one of the biggest reasons. That's was just... That's, honestly, in. that's... Um, that's the only reason I, why I started doing drugs... But right. once I became addicted to drugs, that was that had nothing to do with it. Right. I, was, yeah. I didn't right. care. I was on my own. I was yeah. I sure. had no friends. I didn't care to yeah. hang out mm-hmm. with anyone because then I might have to share my dope. Like who knows, right? Like, and they yeah. sure as heck weren't sharing theirs. So why would I hang out with them? Mm-hmm. You know, that's right. Yeah, sure. I was consumed. Right. I was literally consumed. I was yep. like um, a zombie. Yep. So what do you think was like, um, like mentally, other than you know, like your your you know your girlfriend's leaving you She's and you know you're point. getting yeah. picked up and stuff or left you and all these go- things going on what do you think was really what you know put you in such a place of like being between a rock and a hard place that that like, you yeah, like, decided to what, finally what uh what was the thing that made you like realize okay like i have to change it? yeah not just change for someone else to like m- merely appease them or something but for you when you actually wanted to change yeah, um, well, like I said, like, I think, I think, I mean, like, I know this, honestly, nobody wants to be a drug addict and be consumed by mm-hmm. drugs. Yeah, but, it's true. Um, like, as long as I was out on the streets, there's no chance I was going to get sober. So basically, yeah, like, um, my dad would say, too, like, he was always happy when my, me and my brother went in jail because he knew we were safe, right? But um, basically, like, yeah, like, I, I never... I never wanted to be a drug addict, obviously, but um, of course. it's like it's hard to explain to someone that wasn't never like that consumed by being addicted to drugs. But basically, like you're a di- you're a different person. You're not you're not Again. you know what I mean. You're not thinking clearly. You just get taken over. You get yeah. taken over, man. You are not who you were. So you're not yep. you at all. You're not even in control. You're absolute. Even when you even when you get some sobriety or whatever, it's. You get that thought thrown in your head about, ooh, that'd be nice, one more. It's sure. just, it's insanity, man. And I know what it is now. Like, I don't really want to talk about it, but it's not, you're basically, you know what I mean? You're possessed, right? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, like, it's, it's a, anyone who's been through it, anyone that's got family that, that uh, you know, that you have an addict or yeah. a previous addict in, in your family. Everybody knows, you know, if you haven't gone through it, maybe you don't, but like, Ugh. drugs are 100% well, a spiritual problem, yeah. you know? It's it's not as simple as just uh, you know finding the willpower and going through enough positive affirmations and things like that. Like if you do mm-hmm. not handle like the spiritual stuff that comes along with all these drugs, then you'll never how that how that changes you. You know it's gonna be gonna be real hard. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Possibly. I mean I don't know how anybody Pretty could. Much. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not like a willpower thing. Not like at obviously all. that's part of it, but then you're trying to deal with a spiritual problem physically. Mm. And that's just not gonna work. just it's just that this just it's fighting a losing battle exactly yeah exactly so yeah like, so, like when i was sent to jail the first time i was just terrified i mean yeah. no longer with the wist obviously still i thought not having dope was on my mind but it was more in fear of what was gonna have to be when i got to jail because like, we've all heard some pretty crazy stories and totally like i, was, mm-hmm. like I said i was probably 83 pounds soaking wet right there was a bone rack and yeah um, you know, I was just really scared by my physical well-being in there. And, um, 
you know, fortunately, fortunately when I got in there, like, um, they wanted to put me in a PC right away, protective custody. I was like, hell no. Because like where I, like where I came up from, like PC was like a, that's like where all the rats and stuff went, right? And it's pedophiles. Sure. And, so I was like, hell no, you're not putting me in PC. Yeah, and he's like, definitely. this guy's trying to basically force me in there. And I was like, just give me a chance. Like, so, um, yeah, he put me in the general population and like, fortunately, fortunately, when I got into the unit, there was like a, the biggest guy in the unit was a friend of mine. He was way better friends with my brother, but like we knew each other. So that mm -hmm. was my saving grace, right? That was like, if, sure. if it wasn't for this guy, it would have been, been rough. Let's just say that it would have been rough. Yeah. I would have been in PC. They would have checked me into PC. Sure. Yeah. But so there was that. And then um, basically I was just waiting, like I was waiting to go to court. And, um, and how long how long were you in jail for? The first time I was only in there, I think like twenty days. Really? And um there's quite a few stories in there too as well, but like it wasn't sure. it wasn't fun at all. I, I mean, bet. um yeah, but twenty days actually went by pretty quickly. I don't know why, but it did. And okay. um okay. basically I was, you know, I just thought like I'm I'm gonna get out. I was you know, I was just praying I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna yep. get released yep. and then um so I go to court and um Fortunately, like, I didn't get a chance to talk to my lawyer before I got to court, but um, I sat down, I guess, just before the hearing, and he basically told me how he was going to go for um, just taking me directly from the courthouse to treatment. And him and yep. my dad have been talking, and that's kind of like the plan they'd come up with. So that's sure. what I was looking forward to. And that's what happened. Basically, long story short, I went to treatment, and, um, you know, I, I stuck it out, like, was it 60 days this time? And um, I was actually doing really well, the best I'd ever done. And um, because, like, I, you know, I just kind of really, I guess, really wanted to change. Um, yeah. 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 So it really sort of sounds it. like that, that uh, going to jail for the first time and, you know, like actually having some maybe legitimate consequences to everything that you were doing, like, yeah. was, was a wake up call. Yeah, man. It was scary. Like, I seen where it was going and I just realized I was really yep. fortunate. It was really fortunate. You know, I mean, like, things could have been way worse than, than what they were. Sure. So I was like, man, I can't screw this up. And, um, so yeah, I went to just 60 days. And then um, I know I was going to stay. It was like the same treatment I went to before, but so it was way, way away from my hometown. And, yep. um, you know, I, I was kind of like, I realized obviously going back to my hometown was not a good idea. You uh -huh. know, people told me that. And I kind of knew that too, right? So I was like, you know, I, I, I had already a system set up down there where I was like connected to the recovery community down there now because I've been there and going okay. to meetings and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So yep. like I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a place and I'm gonna stay down here. And um I talked to my cousin, I end up my cousin for me or something down there and she was basically like, F that, you're not staying down there, you're coming to live with me and um so I was like, you know, whatever, that's what I did. And it was just a bad idea. We didn't work out well. Basically, um like she was still drinking all the time, stuff, so even though she was married and had a kid, she was still she was still partying on the weekends and just didn't yeah. understand my problem. True. And, yeah, so before I knew it, like, it's funny though, this time, like, I managed to chip away no long, longer than I did before, before I got, like, com completely consumed by my addiction, but eventually I did, right? It was, like, three years, and then I went, basically, like, I burned every bridge I had in town. Like, my cousin kicked me out when I got loaded there, went and lived with my uncle, and then he had enough, kicked me out, went and lived with my auntie, and yeah. she was just basically, like, I only could live with her because I was trying to get her treatment. That was that, and um, so yeah, then I basically I went to <clears throat> treatment in Vancouver, and um, I was living in campus at the time, went down to Vancouver, went and played at this stage called Inner Visions, and it was like, it was like really, it was really good, I was taking it serious again, right, like I was, hit a yep. hole, in the, like, it seemed like every time, like I got out of control, it really got out of control, and I was doing things yeah. I wouldn't necessarily do before, like it was, it got bad, and I I'd get just desperate and put myself in some of bad situations, and um, actually, I OD. That's what it was. I I, I OD three times this time. I never actually OD to, to the point where I like had to be Narcan. Or, and the last of my OD is when I had to be brought back to life with a defibrillator. And yeah. um, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, super super that fortunate is... to be alive, right? And, um, <laughs> you literally are a walking miracle. Absolutely. Yeah, I like, should have died so many just... times. Yeah, like should have died, should have like not been here yeah. right now, not been healed, all these things. If if life had gone the way that you were, um, you know, kind of running your own life, like it would have, it would have just 
ooh, continued worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And, you know, you had miracles happen to you and you literally God became me so for sure. many. a walking yeah. miracle. So many. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's by the grace of God that you're here. Yeah. And, it, and then why don't you, uh, why don't you, oh, let's go again. Like it's, a, like, it's amazing I survived that last one because basically I was like, I was in my car with another guy and um, I OD'd in my car and it wasn't where I was, I remember being parked. But anyways, he left me for dead in the car and it was some lady wow. walking by that saw me purple and called 911. Like it's an absolute miracle I survived, let alone I'm yep. not a vegetable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. Like, that's crazy. You got all your teeth. Yeah. You can hold well, the conversation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, you know, no, for like sure. You're, like, and just, just, okay, so that, that's like a perfect segue. So yeah. c- can you like fast forward a little bit and, and just kind of get to the point like right before maybe when we met and you started, you know, got, you got into contact with us and we kind of started like yeah. your, your, okay. your actual detox program, mm-hmm. you know, just like yeah. real. Cause like, I know when we first met, it was basically like a good solid, at least maybe, you know, three, four five years of just treatment. Something happens, treatment, something happens and just yeah. this roller coaster of just, you just, you know, fighting for your life basically. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so basically, like, what just before I met you guys, is mm-hmm. when I was, like, um, in treatment again, but I was in second stage treatment, I sure. actually, like, got quite a bit of sobriety, but, um, like, I had a year clean or whatever, and um, I was still, like, struggling with my health and stuff. Like, my life was not yep. fun. Life well, I mean, you know, like, all the chemo, I, yeah. all the yeah, drugs brutal, when you were a man. kid. Like, I was just struggling to stay sober, basically. Addiction and stuff. Yeah, you were, yeah. Never, you were never able to grow, yeah. really. You were just so much i mean the radiation like that alone just you know that that was having lingering effects on you your whole life yeah exactly yeah yeah just bananas so, yeah like long story short i won't get into much of that she was stayed with like i said when i met you guys i was in second stage treatment and um tell me the story how i met you guys i was basically working like <clears throat> doing painting so like at this time when i met gold rush i was obviously like i was still struggling with my health conditions and stuff <clears throat> not just physical health like i can get into like i had super bad cramps um, yep. chronically low energy, like I'd go work a paint, work a day painting, and they come mm. home so tired I'd have to like have a nap. Sometimes right. I wouldn't even wake up to like the next morning. Like I was also mad, like trying to manage this second stage. I was with a bunch of drug addicts who, like you know, better physical shape than me, but not mentally for sure, right? Because sure. they were sure. just kind of fresh. Like I had a lot more sobriety, and that's why I was managing the house. <laughs> but anyways, like I was really struggling physically as well as mentally. Um, yeah. For whatever reason, like I said, like he said, I I hadn't detoxed none of that, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. um, so I, can... I just started really getting my head, getting right. like, like the the struggle was real, right? And I was just came to the conclusion that like, you know, I'm really struggling here. Like, I'm not even really enjoying life. I'm just, <clears throat> I'm just basically like surviving. And sure. um, I was just for whatever reason, I got that insane thing, and I, you know, I was starting to think about doing dope again, like. Just to get yeah. that reprieve because my mind mm-hmm. would tell me that, like, you know, you get a little bit of reprieve if you just, you know, did some dope, right? I feel pretty yep. good and whatever. That's how it goes, mm-hmm. right? And, sure. uh, and I, I'd been through it enough times to realize that that was happening. And yeah. I was like, this last time when I came, like, when I came into treatment, I was actually, <clears throat> like, the lowest of low. I was pulling on Hastings, right? Which was just mm-hmm. brutal. Um, yeah. Like, it was an all new low, right? It never been. Totally. In that rough of shape. But anyways, like, so I was starting to have that thinking about, you know, doing dope again. My mind was telling me that'd be a good idea. And I was like, just, I was like, honestly scared, kind of in a panic. And then, like, I was starting to get thoughts of, you know, like, if you can't stay sober this time, and obviously it's like, this is the same pattern over and over again. You're, and then I was just thought, you know, like, if you, you may as well just kill yourself. And I never had the thought yeah. of suicide before, which so... Like when I had that thought and I was like, it, it just came out of nowhere. Um, it really, really scared me. Like it really scared yep. me. And I just made like, I just right then and there, I like kind of like got down my hands and knees. Not kind of, I did. I like shot to the floor and just started crying and like begging, like begging for help. Like God, if like, cause they, they like, they, they tell you there's a God and stuff, right? But they don't. Right. They don't, yeah. Whoever they just, whatever. Don't okay. do them justice. I mean, yeah, explaining exactly. who he actually is. So, like, I was kind of, like, trying to connect with the water, right? Like, in AA, I thought, to the best of my ability, right? Sure. And, um, so, like, you know, they taught you, like, to pray and, you know, ask God for stuff, right? But, yep. So, yep. I was just, like, in a really rough, rough spot. So, I gave it everything I had and was, like, 
like I said, I was in tears, man, just begging for God to help me, like, save me, like, you can't do this, right? And, um, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. crazy. That's, like, the very next day is when, um, I, I basically was introduced to your dad. It was a, right. just a phone call. And, um, <laughs> like I said, Galraj, it's a funny story. Uh, this guy, Galraj, like, was asking me for a ride home from work one day. And it's crazy, too, because it was on a Saturday, and I never go to that job on a Saturday. And I can't remember the reason why I did, but it's, it's it was meant to be obviously because yeah. I mm -hmm. did and that was the day I needed to ride home right and yep. he came and asked me for a ride home and I was just saying I was painting and I was like yeah just let me finish up here and I'll give you a ride home and then uh, as I'm giving me a ride home he's just telling me the story how this holistic health and life coach saved his life from glycosate poisoning and mm -hmm. it was a pretty radical story and we'll get into it but I just like bells and whistles were going off in my head and I was like yeah it sounds pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I was just moved to, to want to talk to this guy. And um, I said, is there any chance you think I'm, we could reach out to him? Or like, how does this work? And he's like, I can try and give him a call right now. He's super busy, but I'll give him a call. Yep. I was like, yeah, sure, man, call me right now. And he called him and he answered. And we like we passed the phone to me and we started talking. And just, yeah, man, like I just loved everything he was saying and just, for a reason, I just everything he was saying just blew my mind. Like yep. <clears throat> stuff I never yep. heard before, but I knew it was the truth. And I was like, "This guy knows what he's doing." That's... Like this is obviously meant to be. And um, I'm gonna keep doing this. <laughs> I'm gonna keep talking to this awesome. guy because this feels great, right? And yep. that's what I did, man. He called me and like, yeah. it was just like I was my life was changed forever and on that then day. How, how long after you you and uh, and pops had your first phone call? Did you drive up to meet us? Honestly, bro, I can't remember. Like I think it was a couple of weeks. Right? Something like I don't that. know if you remember, but it's probably a couple it weeks. It was really fast, I know that. It much. was yeah, fast, and, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was like a, yeah. a long yeah. drive, too. Definitely yeah. a long drive, too, to just go out and meet this guy that you don't even know. You've only had a few, you know, phone yeah. calls with or yep. something. Yep. Just yeah. because you just knew for what, when he was... What, was there anything in that phone call that you can think of and remember that, that like, stood out to you as something that, that you know, really gave you hope or yeah. that was, like, the, the coolest right. thing you said or anything like that? Honestly, like, yes, I can't remember any particular thing, but I just remember, dude, my mind was blown, man, like, in, like, I used to, like, look for, this is part of the story, too, but even though I was a drug addict and stuff, like, yeah, when I was smoking weed, like, I got cancer again, actually, I didn't touch on that, but I yep. actually got cancer a second time, and yeah. um, so I was looking for the cure, right, yep. and um, yep. I was right into natural healing and stuff like that, even though he didn't know much, but I knew yeah. organic foods and stuff was good, and I'd, like, yep. I dived deep down the rabbit hole and was like looking into some stuff, but I just didn't know because yeah. I heard so many different things. Yeah, and then true. when your dad was saying all this stuff, it was just like, it was just like bells going off in my head. Like this guy was like, yeah, I, yep. I just knew, I just knew oh. this guy knows more than anyone I've ever. Like I spent thousands and thousands of dollars on um, naturopaths, holistic healers, energy healers. I literally yep. searched out the best. I'm doctor of Chinese medicine in all of Canada, and I went and saw him. Like, mm. like, I spent a lot of money trying to get healthy, and sure, and like I had some like some you know mild relief, I'd say benefit maybe, but okay. So yeah, like I was like I said, I was searching, and when like yeah, <clears throat> first doctor died, I just knew, I just knew, right. yeah, like right. I just that's, you know. that's cool, yeah, that's cool, and I was just super excited, so, like so after you the drive first. Up, and, you, you you meet us in person. <laughs> you know, yeah. We, we spend that day together. That was pretty fun. And then, yeah. And then, what happened after that? Basically, like, um, your dad just started coaching me on like how to detox my body. I, yep. I radically changed my diet because my diet was way out of whack. Right, I didn't know sure yep. nothing about eating you know raw healthy living foods and stuff. And yeah, like, yep. You know, I didn't know I didn't know enough about anything really. And um, basically, he um, you know, I started drinking. Drinking the water your dad recommends, right? And, then, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, that was huge. And then I did a parasite cleanse. Like, that was another big yep. thing I did. Um, yep. Definitely, definitely that was, I noticed a massive difference on that. Like, even though I was, like, doing really well, I noticed once I started doing the parasite cleanse, that's when my um, my, my emotional and stuff really started to change. Yeah. And um, But, yeah, like, like I said, you just radically... Told me to change my diet and you know supplements and stuff like that and um, yep. his coaching or whatever. Right, like whenever yeah. he would phone and talk to me, like he, I had hope. 
as yeah. well. I never really had that hope before, you know, like. That's so cool. That's so, yeah, dude, so, so It was beautiful. amazing, man. Like, I never, he would just paint the picture so clearly for me. I would just, like. I know. Yeah. It was wild, man. I can't even describe how much peace I felt, like, just knowing you guys. It was, yeah. That's amazing. It was amazing, That's man. amazing. And then, yeah. so, like, so, if I'm remembering right, you were just past a year sober. Yeah. When you, when you met us. Okay. Yeah. Just then, over here. But th this was right when you were, you know, at that super, super low moment, you know, yeah, when you dropped down on your hands and knees and yeah, I was you were just, that. you know, it, 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 it wasn't <laughs> going to be much longer. Yeah. Um, and so like, what, like, how, how, how are you, how are you five years sober now? Almost four and a half, five years. Like, like what, what changed, you know, like how, how was, how was, how was this time any different than all the other times you tried to get off drugs and you tried to, to detox and, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, there's a, well, there's a lot of different things, obviously, right? Like, um, um, you know, my better. health is way better. You guys, you know, you got my mm -hmm. health on trap, which was a major, major part of my struggle, right? That's why I started doing well, drugs me. in the first place. One yeah. of, not why, but one of, right, yeah. was to feel better. Right? Yeah. So once I started feeling better without drugs, that was yep. a major mm -hmm. motivator to keep going. I right? bet. That was awesome. I bet. Yeah. I so, could, like, I, like, how, how did your health improve? The, sorry? How, how did your health improve? Well, like, um, like my mental health, obviously my depression went away. My anxiety went away. Wow. Um, you know, I had way more energy. I could stay up all day, all night and, and just be you know, <laughs> super energetic. Yeah, right? You weren't having that crash anymore. Yeah, exactly. Um, energy like, just the energy was, the yeah, the better. mental clarity, like <laughs> my, like my memory was so bad. I like, it was, it was, it was brutal. Like it was absolutely Remember. brutal. Like, it was. I remember. I guess I was struggling just to get through the day, man. And it was, yep. it was really sad. And um, so yeah, my mental clarity got way better. My memory improved drastically. Um, I no, I was having super bad cramps when I met you mm -hmm. guys. Like it, I was tons of cramps in my jaw and stuff, full body. But all that went away. Um, yeah, man. Just, just everything got so much better. No more depression, obviously. And yep. um, another huge part was like. Obviously, the, the environment I was in, right, I was now surrounded by people who knew what they were doing. You really had a solution. The solution yep. I was looking for, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, you guys, like, taught me a totally different way to live. And then I found a purpose, you know what I mean, which is, is massive. Yep. Especially in addiction, you got to have a purpose, right? Well, well yeah, anyone's got to have a purpose. Yeah. You can enjoy life really to the fullest. Fighting for yourself. Value yourself. Yep. So, so go, go into that a little bit. Like, what is your purpose? Well, what are you what are you on the earth here for? What what did uh, what did God save you for? Mm, that's a good question. Definitely, well, yes, it's to help people, right? It's to help people, the, and now I know that through meeting you guys, it's to help people get healthy and yeah, just thrive in every area of life, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, yep. it's been a huge motivator just to get myself better, so I can be a better, more positive influence to other people. Sure. <laughs> sure. And like, so like, what, what's that like? You know, like, what, what's your, what's your day to day like? You know, like, what are you, what are you doing now? How are you, how are you helping people? Like, where, where's your head at? How do you feel? Yeah, well, it's, I feel amazing, obviously, but I mean, <laughs> I, <laughs> but I got, I can, um, as far as helping people, like, I'm still learning, right? So basically, sure. like, as you guys know, obviously, but to tell people that don't know, is I'm working and training with you guys now, right? Yeah. And, um, yep. So that's been, um, it's been amazing. So, um, you know, basically I just like, you know, I help bring people to you guys and, and just show them mm -hmm. through, like, I don't, I'm not trying to, you know, I don't, I just influence people by being an example of health. And the, for those that know me, they know where I came from. It's just like, we'll get along. like, well, you know, this guy's obviously changed something, he's doing something right. And, yep. um, so, you know, I just try and try and help people and. And just yeah. be that light at the end of the tunnel for them, right? Yeah, for, you, for sure. The best way like, to do like that. you, you must have a couple of stories of people that you know you you've been involved in, in us working with, you know, because I mean you're 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 a pretty important part of the whole piece. Oh, definitely. And and you know you get more wow. and more important and more and more involved as as mm -hmm. uh, time goes on, as the as the weeks and months go on, you know. It's like do you do you have any do you have any highlights? Any anything you want to share? You know, just to kind of give people you know some cool stories about where you're at now, because like to me. Like this whole stuff is the exciting part. 
Yeah, you know, like, yeah, exactly. The guns it's... and the drugs and the girls and the explosions and the dra- trafficking. Oh well, yeah, walking like, away yeah. from you know that's that's that would that, that, make a decent movie, I guess. Yeah, you know, but mm-hmm. like there where was, you're yeah, at now, hard. like that's this, this is the fun the part. Real, this is the real fun part. Exactly, victory yeah. story. Yeah, because there is no fulfillment in anything I was doing before. That's for sure. Of course not. Well, yeah. yeah, like honestly, the the best the best high I've ever experienced now is seeing people who are struggling with their health issues or not just physical health, mental health issues, just get well, yep. right? Yeah. I've been fortunate enough to be able to, to bring some people in into to meeting you guys, like was me, was done mm-hmm. for me. And yeah. um that's been the best feeling ever is to see is to see them get their health back, right? It's there's like True. I said, I've experienced some highs and there's no high that compares to that, right? There's no yeah. there's absolutely no better feeling in the world and I'm just excited to be able to do that on the daily, Holy. every day, all day. Absolutely. It's just it's mind blowing. That's cool. That's yeah. really cool. Like, like, what do you, what are some of your plans now? Like, where do you want to, where do you want to go? Where do you want to take this? Like, what do you, what do you, what do you want your, um, your Aspir- look like? Yeah. What's your aspiration? Yeah, like, I got like pretty big vision of what I want to do. And just <laughs> like, um, obviously yet, you know, get way more training on, on doing that, the health and life coaching and, you know, that's sure. going good. But yep. <clears throat> like, what I want to do is like create a, like some sort of holistic health and, and, um, addiction centers that's my yeah you know just kind of um to be able to help people like like what you guys did for me because there's a huge huge need for that obviously as we know yeah and yep. um there's no one really doing what you guys are doing and um that's the real solution right is to because i mean it, much, it seems like it's worked pretty well for you so far and, and everybody yeah, else you uh, met everybody else you know? exactly so like like from from your perspective, why why do you think it works so well this time? Like like why why do you think that you know? Because like, well, every situation is you know. different, obviously, right? But sure, I mean, they're like my story is you know, is not completely unique. Cause there's a lot of people like went through what I went through, right? Yeah. Not to say it's they've been the same things or whatever, but that doesn't matter. Sure. Yeah. But sure. But basically, like how things are different from what I tried for before is like I mentioned because. Um, you guys got me feeling good, like not just mentally yep. but physically, which is what I struggled yep. with for so long. And yep. just there was, I felt, you know, felt like. But I, I mean, like, like how life. though? Like, like how, how how do we make you feel good when when all these other places and centers yeah. and you know programs? Okay, like and an example expert. you want? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So basically, yeah. like any treatment center I've went to, basically it's just like they don't, you know, they obviously don't they don't fully understand addiction, obviously, but. Um, yeah, you know. Sure. I mean, that's it's, you know, from what, from what you've told us, it definitely doesn't seem like, you know, yeah. uh, it's what, whatever they were trying to do was not working for yeah. you or anybody yeah, you met. Ex- yeah, exactly. Their success rate is very, very minimal. Very right? low. I think it's like two yeah. percent. I think yeah. I think that those are the high ones. Those those are the good centers. And they it's got been about. my experience, like the guys that are successful are like, um, mm-hmm. it's not they they weren't quite the same, right? They didn't have the health challenges and stuff, right? Maybe they weren't. Sure. In it sure. as well, like the younger guys seem to do yeah. a lot better, right? I mean, right you know, narcotic drugs and addiction as long as yours is hard enough as it is, let alone, yeah. you know, getting cancer as a kid. Yeah. And then You're and pass around. radiation and all these medications and being Somebody. able to have on like, like yeah. great stuff. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. Pretty hard. That's just, that's just just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, basically what, what the treatment centers do is they just get people off of drugs they get them mm-hmm. off the street and they get them off of drugs, but they still yep. feed them cra- crappy foods, right? It's just like, sure. there's no, you know, yeah, there's a lot of things that are lacking there, right? And I mean, you can't, you can't be healthy in your mindset if you're unhealthy physically, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's all, they're all tied together. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your brain is in your body. <laughs> yeah. It's true. And, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. What, what do you... Like, wh- where's your head at now? Like, like, what's life like now? You know, because like, mm-hmm. you're, you've, you obviously, you've mentioned a couple of times, you know, you've, you've, uh, spent some time sober in the past and mm-hmm. obviously now you're sober again, you know, um, but how is it different now being sober than it was when you were sober before? Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, it's completely different because when I was so, like, I wouldn't even call it sober. Did they call it like a, I was like, I was dry, but I had no, like, you know, I, was, I, I wasn't doing yeah. adult, but I may as well have been like. Sure. I was still the same person. I was like struggling super, like it was a daily fight just not to do drugs, right? Like, 
Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's just that's the way it was, right? Like, I still had all my problems. The only, the only thing that was better was I wasn't doing drugs. That's the only right. thing that was different. So, but now it's obviously it's massively different, obviously, because I feel good. You know what I mean? Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I want to be doing. Like, I feel like I'm actually, mm-hmm. you know, serving, serving people, which is, like I yeah. said, like I had a taste of that in treatment because I was kind of working on there, but yep. it's not the same at all, right? Because I believe in this 100% because I've seen right. it work for myself. So right. basically yeah. it's like, yeah, I, it's, it's totally radically different because like I just, I completely see a division and I know what needs to be done. I know how we can help people and yep. it's just, it's do, not. Do you still think about drugs? Do I still think about drugs? No. I, like I don't yeah. ever think, like, you know, I've, I've thought like I've, thought about when i used to do drugs but i never thought about doing yeah. drugs if that makes sense like, like your cravings are gone heck yeah ne- not, never not craving. Any, any more. no wow yeah completely and how, how long has it been like that ever since basically um shortly after meeting you guys basically is when i, when I really got oh, yeah no, seriously cool. yeah right oh, that's, that's, that's amazing crazy, that, yeah. that that's alone so- is such a big miracle because yeah. even if people are able to stay sober for a long time, those cravings are are stuck. Well, just just to like, like think about how hard it is for people to like beat cigarettes and not yeah, mm-hmm. and that. food addiction, yeah, let yeah. alone hard drugs. And I mean, there's one thing. Like, there's this thing. Somebody to be said for people that you know, it's commendable if you have yeah. the power and the discipline to like fight those urges. Yeah, you know, that's freaking awesome. That, that's amazing. definitely. But that's it's great. It necessary. seems like anyway, just from our time knowing you and every, yeah. everybody else we've we've kind of worked with that had you know problems somewhat similar to yours. Is like it's a completely different game when you're not constantly battling just to do the right thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You no. Know? Yeah, for sure. W- w- would you say that's right? Yeah, most definitely, man. And this thing with treatment too, even though guys are sober, not doing drugs, like you said, they're addicted to eating or they're addicted to cigarettes. Or sure. Mm-hmm. I was literally free of every addiction I had, even cigarettes. Which, right. When I met you uh, guys, when I met you, you guys, I was still smoking cigarettes. I don't yep. know if you knew that or yep. not, but. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You can sell it. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it was, can, yeah. You, know, you were doing a great job hiding it, not all. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so here, just because I I know obviously you know you're a busy guy, you're helping people. Yeah. Um, just real quick though, can you can can we like take some time, like all of us, and just you know maybe if anybody's watching, if they've taken the time to get this far into it, like this is by far like our longest one yet. So, like, you know, for, for the record, for everybody watching, like, thank you. Everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah. Coming in from Warrior Nation. Thank you, guys. Um, you know, but before we go, can can we put together, like, a little bit of a plan, like, for anybody watching, anyone that's maybe going through what you're going through, like, they were kind of in the spot you were in yeah. before you met us. You know, mm-hmm. they're down low. Maybe they're having a couple wins here and there. They're spending some time sober, that sort of thing. But, like, is there any Good. advice that you yeah. can give them or any any plans we can put together to kind of help people figure out what they need to do if they want to, you know, really beat this and get to the place where you're at now, like where you're not even thinking about drugs, it's not a struggle anymore, you don't wake up and, yeah. you know, have any cravings or anything like that? What's the steps for success, Bill? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, that's pretty complex. You put this on me. Um, yeah. No, um, Point I, I would form. say change. The first thing they got to do is change their environment, right? Change your environment. Uh, yeah, because that's a big part yeah. of why people do drugs is because they're just in a bad environment. But, like, it's a combination of everything, honestly, because, yeah. you know, I, ch- I changed my environment. And that's the first thing I did, right? So I was surrounded by people who, um, for the common goal was to stay sober, right? So I had yep. that going for me. And so there's, like, the camaraderie of that, right? So there's just being surrounded by people who had the same goals, yeah. it's, even though it's a minimal goal at that time, right? It sure. was, um, as long as you stay connected, but it's still, it's, it's, man, so, yeah, I'm not going to go to say what they did, but basically, yeah, eliminate your bad, toxic environment, right? That's the first step. Okay. For sure. And eliminate all the toxic foods and liquids and stuff that you're drinking, right? Mm. Start drinking the living, living, clean, pure water. Because that's yeah. a massive game changer. The best water you can find, you know, the filter it, get the that you're crucial. talking about. You know, it's like you guys teach for seventy five percent water, right? And I didn't understand yep. that at all. Yeah, absolutely. I was drinking smart water. And I thought that was a good idea, but yeah, I thought it was smart. It's an expensive idea. Yeah, expensive <laughs> idea. Yeah, and it wasn't good at all. So yeah, just like um, then exercise, right? Exercise is a key, yeah. huge game changer because when you do drugs, <laughs> basically you just like it's it's endorphins, right? So you're you're once you're 
do the drug or whatever, it's like it releases a bunch of endorphins. And yep. then when you're no longer doing drugs, you're no longer making that connection with the endorphins. Then it's like you get super, super depressed. So that's a big reason why guys keep doing drugs. Yeah, and um, when you do exercise, it releases some endorphins, right? Which is mm. so yep. that's why I say it's super crucial Huge. to exercise daily. Okay. Like, okay. You know, like, when you start off, you're pretty rough. Like I was in rough shape when I came off of Hastings. Like, big time. So even oh, just yeah. getting out and walking was um, yep. a challenge, man. It's crazy. It was it a sounds, struggle, but, but you know, you, you fought through it. You did it. You know, and yeah, and just thankfully uh, everything that we did, um, you know, all the steps we took, everything, so the stuff you're getting into now, you know, like <laughs> it was, it just started pain. working fast yeah. enough. That the pain <laughs> was going, and it's yeah. once the pain was was gone. I mean, you know, you were just wild bill but like wild in a good way not wild like right. you're you know growing pot and people off wild just in a way like you just won't quit yeah i know that's huge thing too which was for me was um i just 100 percent focused on myself and when getting yeah. myself well and um right i kind of like right. yeah just being around you guys and stuff and um yep. a couple yep. of people i met through you guys i would just hang out with them and so basically yeah. like like i said it's all about environment too right so if, if i went back to that AA um, treatment environment again, it would be just so much harder to stick to the program that I was doing, I believe, anyways. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and just like, just take that time to like, just realize like, even that messed up for that long, like what's, what's even a year now just to focus on yourself, like figure out sure. who you are and what you want to do instead yeah. of trying to jump back into life right away, which is a mistake yeah. I made and I've seen quite a few guys make more times than i can Got count it. yeah for sure Got it. And so it's just, just taking time to heal sorry oh, and it's like getting to know the real you not the who exactly. you are exactly yeah mm -hmm. people, that's a good one thank you are yeah. yeah yeah yep okay okay so so change your environment mm -hmm. get around people that love you that support you that, that can you know have a common lift goal. you up have a common goal not going to try to drag you back down yeah. you know mm -hmm. get you to do things put you in risky risky situations mm. that sort of thing you know just just so. like no one's going to enable you it's that kind of thing man. right is that pretty much summed up what you were talking yeah, about exactly yeah for sure and then and then you mentioned you know exercise um any particular exercise you prefer anything you like the best i prefer hiking honestly yeah, yeah like hiking, hiking is the run, best bike ride. Sightseeing, sightseeing, yeah. Yeah. yeah getting out in the sunshine fresh air cool fresh air so get out, get outside yeah. get some fresh air go for yeah. a hike that sort of thing Mm -hmm. um and then you said do it daily you know do it consistently yeah that's that was a really really important part for you too just and not like just the fact of like the exercise all the time but just consistency in general you know exactly. and just helping build those habits build that routine and just like put a system together you know yeah exactly. that sort of thing and then and then you talked about changing your water changing your diet like what what is what is that like a little bit like what kind of stuff did you eat like were you were you eating like, nothing like mushrooms I mean, and kale and like <laughs> what was your diet like or, what was it diet like before I met you guys? You mean? No, no, like, like, mm. like what, what, like the diet like that you're recommending people to eat? Okay, well, it's, yeah, like, like, like you guys recommend, but basically it's all like, okay. I eat mostly like raw living foods now, always organic. Yep. yep. Um, you know, I don't eat any processed foods. That's right. what I used to before. You eat a lot of processed sure. foods and stuff, which, sure. you know, even when I first started, when I first met you guys, and I, I just made that simple change to eating organic, um, mostly raw, because I did that raw diet right off the hop. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was that that in a huge part of your detox. First day, you notice a difference. Like it's absolutely yeah. mind blowing. Tanya. Much... <laughs> oh yeah. So like when you ask like what's your favorite exercise, sumo pose, sumo squat while sitting on the couch is what she said. Hilarious. That's yeah, so gosh. funny. Um. That's good. Yeah. Who's this? So yeah. okay. So so eat lots of living food. Um. Mm -hmm. And then what about the water? Like what what advice you got for people on the water situation? Smart water sounds like that's out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> From what I learned from you guys is basically like all the waters that we're drinking would be tap water and bottled water, mm. um, reverse osmosis. All those waters they just weren't doing definitely what I needed it to do, right? When what anybody needs right. because like our our environment is just super super toxic. Like let's face it, right? You, it's yeah. more toxic than it's ever been, and it, I don't see it letting up anytime soon, honestly. Sure. So, um. So yeah, basically I started drinking this um this living water, which was you know. Yep. Um, it was a super powerful antioxidant rich water as opposed to the water I was drinking before was highly oxidative, right? And it's just, you know, yep. I was drinking a ton of water and um, I just still wasn't, I was super, super dehydrated. That's why mm. I was getting the cramps, right? And basically as soon as I started yeah, drinking this water, my cramps just went away. 
Yeah, and so and the, I, the water you're talking about, the ionizer? Yeah, the ionized yeah. water, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 Okay, got it. All right, so yeah, and I, then... Sorry, yeah, go, no, ahead. go ahead. So yeah, ladies, I, ladies I would, first. I would, ladies first. I would, Canadian. I will promote that till the day I die for sure because... Right? Same I don't here. Know, I couldn't live without it now. You know what I mean? There's no yeah. way. Me too. I, would, I hear you. I, yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Okay, so so we got all that, and then and then you know, um, I, you didn't. I don't know if you really mentioned it in your in your plan for everybody, but we've talked about it quite a bit. Just mentioned like the detox that you did. You know. Yeah. Do you, mm -hmm. do you think that's something that was a necessary part of your program? Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, okay. definitely. Okay. Yeah. How, how do you There's, how do you think that helped? Well, it's it's helped because it's basically like um, you know, you can't you can't be positive and be healthy in the mindset. Unless you're yeah. feeling super good physically, right? It's just they go True. hand in hand, sure. and um, it's just that you know that's just the way it is, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and I, would, I would say too, on top of all that, like another huge part is just you know, literally getting the chemicals from all these drugs, yeah. from all the medications, from the radiation, yeah. like the actual thing that's causing the craving physically. Yeah. Yeah. out of your body yeah so the craving's not there anymore just remember the connection yeah, yeah you exactly. have to just remember the connection not just mm -hmm. physically but spiritually emotionally mentally it's not part of your identity anymore it's not part of your life anymore just yep. cut it out completely totally. yeah yeah cool so yeah like i was super toxic more than most i guess would be in, sure. in treatment more than but yeah because i went through his cancer yep. and stuff but yep so yeah and detox was it's absolutely awesome right Mm -hmm. yeah okay got it got it awesome cool man okay yeah. well here but before before we close off and before before we end the recording just open things up for the q a and everything um do you do you have any like final words any any thoughts any wisdom any, like is there is there if there's one thing that somebody can get from hearing your story and just seeing where you were and where you are now and just how hopeful and like you know guys like i'll tell you right now if if you if we had a picture of bill Shut day up. one just trying to smile like bill's happy yeah for how happy bill was day one versus mm -hmm. how you're seeing it now like mm -hmm. it's it's night and day difference. definitely night and day definitely you know so just yeah do, do you have any it's to close out just for anybody watching the recording anybody that's checking this out after we're done here on the live um you know do you have any any words for anyone yeah for sure like i would say like in all what i went through i just felt super super hopeless like i was Hmm. I felt like it's like if things were never gonna get better, you know, that's kind of where I was at, right? Like before yep. I met you guys. So I would say like to anyone struggling with their like no matter what you're struggling with or how low down or how bad you think things are, you know, it's like just don't give up and like no matter what, there's hope. Like you can you can turn it around. And um I think like um you know, I'm living proof of that, right? It's totally. never in a million years like if you were to told me I'd be doing what I'm doing now and then I thought you're insane. Right? Like there's, there's yeah. no way I would even think I could be doing what I'm doing now, and feeling yeah. this good, and it's just you know. So, yeah, that's awesome. Man. That's super. That's cool. That's super great. And watch the miracle, and ladies and gentlemen. Walking miracle, wild <laughs> Bill he's doing miracle. Wild Bill, yeah. But 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 he's wild for the good stuff now. You know, yeah. he's wild for yeah. life. He's wild for 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 God, and you know, just the relationship yeah. that you developed. Um, over these last few years with 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 god and everything is just amazing you know wild Absolutely. for being be an example for your family wild for you know like you, all you're talking about with the rehab centers and all these things just you know helping all these people like I, you know um I, I gotta double check the numbers but like i'm pretty sure you know you've you've been pretty intimately involved in us you know yeah. uh helping and and working with like over 20 people now easy something mm -hmm. like that Definitely. you know really needed like, help like there's definitely been a lot more that that you've uh you've shared your story with <laughs> yeah you know that have, yeah. um, you know, listened to some of your advice and that sort of thing. But like, I think that you've like actually, once you got the training enough and, you know, you're able to actually, you know, provide some help and, you know, kind of assist and, and as far as their program goes and mm -hmm. answer some basic questions and things like that, you know, like it's like at least maybe 20 people by now that, you mm -hmm. know, you've like had a hands-on impact in them overcoming health problems and fixing lifelong chronic mental conditions health problems. and mental wow. health and just, you know, being that example you're talking about. Like, this is just the beginning. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, yeah, uh, excited for especially, sure. especially with this podcast too, you know, mm -hmm. like just story out there, let everybody know, like, you know, the, the, the brutal reality of what it's like to go through what you went through, you know, and just no hold bars, no, nothing held back. Just thank you for being so honest and vulnerable, yeah. all that stuff, you know, and just like not, 
not trying to glorify any of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, like, people are just like, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I was, was, funny. I was a big <laughs> shot. I was a big guy. Yeah. And everybody looked up to me. And, all, you know, like, I don't know how you see, like, all this gangster stuff in the movies. Yeah. But, like, it's really not what it's like. No. You know, it's, no. it's miserable. It's a horrible existence. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and yeah. uh, just to go from that to where you're at now, you know, going from living on the street, being awake for 10 days, waking up at mm. random places. You know, we and we didn't even like guys. We didn't even scratch the surface. We didn't and scratch things. the surface. There's yeah. so much. You know, so much like, more. Like, there's so many stories. I mean, we could we could make this like a six hour podcast. Oh, easy. definitely. You know, definitely. Like of just of running from the cops and running from other <laughs> other People dealers. Were onward and you know, you know. <laughs> after you, all, near death experiences. Yeah. Breaking yeah. the law, not getting caught, getting caught, like all these things. You know, this is like. You know, we're we're definitely gonna we're gonna put a, a mature warning on this for the recording. Yeah, for, <laughs> for kids and that sort of stuff. We talk a lot about drugs and guns and you know that sort of thing. But anyway, yeah. but like this is even still like the G-rated version. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's true. You know, definitely. So just thank you, for, thank you for being on here, man. So much. I'm really happy we we're able to make we're this work really and slide it up you. because mm -hmm. uh, you know your story. Mark my words, your story will inspire so many, many people. people. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Winning. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having me. It's been an honor, honestly. And I'm yeah, forever this, grateful this for you great. guys. Done it for was you. fantastic. It's great. I'm so happy we got to meet you. I'm so yeah. happy that you're going to be in our lives for a long time. And just, yeah. you know, to see, you know, how just broken, you know, you were mm -hmm. when we first met on that, that first day. I just remember looking in your eyes and just seeing, like, yeah. sad yeah. human, you know. And now um, I'm watching you. I wish, you I wish really we had a picture of that, honestly. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe we'll find one. Maybe we can yeah. find one. Maybe we can one. That'd be good. Honestly. But um, but yeah, so everybody, thank you all for watching. Thank we're, you so we're much. We're going to close out the recording here. Yeah. We're just going to open things up for, for a little bit longer just for some Q&A with everybody watching live. Yeah. Um, But yeah, thank you, Bill. Thank Thanks you, for being here. And, thank you, guys. Uh, if anyone's watching, you know, just know that if, if, if William can do it, yeah. you can do it too. You can do it too. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. Have a great day, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thank you guys. for watching. Have any questions? Want to reach out to Bill, hear more of his story, anything in the story? Comment yeah. below what you think. Yep. You know, share some of your story too, some of your struggles. You know, it, it's really, really important to. Yeah. If, if this helps you or if you think it can help anybody that you know, yeah. you know, spread the word, share this because yeah. stories like these need to get out there in the world. There's so much negativity and so many things mm. it's dragging people down, you know putting a little bit of light and uh and a, a good honest you know underdog champion of the world story yeah just gonna do some good definitely you know definitely and if you or someone one of your loved ones wants some help then you know you want to ask more questions about you know the natural detox that bill did or yeah. some of the you know mindset coaching that he went through or just like anything he went through the ionizers that he that he mentioned J there's help um, the resources are there yeah, you know perhaps. and uh and we want to help as many people as possible so. yes if you yes. think that that's something that, that uh, you'd like, reach out, talk to somebody on the team. We'd be yep. happy to f figure out something for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. So, awesome. Wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks, Bill. I, I appreciate your time. Thank you for being here, man. And uh, yeah, we're going to close out the recording now and just open things up for uh, for our live Q&A. But yes. man, this was a fun one. This, this was a ride. Was awesome. so much Thanks, fun. guys. Yeah, this was awesome. It was great. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, guys.